welcome to the B. Lenore Show. Here, we will discuss lifestyle, beauty, celebrity gossip, and current events in our own way, my way, B. Style. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. Hi, everybody. Welcome. It is Wednesday, hump day. Uh, what is today? March 27th. My God, it's almost April, y'all. It's almost April. Well, anyway, good to see everybody here. Those of you in the chat, sorry to keep you waiting, but you know, you can't rush perfection, doggone it. All right. Now, look, I'm excited tonight because two of my favorite guests ever are back. Yes, I love talking to them both. Um, and you guys obviously love it too, because I've heard so much feedback about both of these ladies. And I'm so glad that they're here tonight. But first, let me say hi to everybody here. Um, let's see. Hi, Sylvia's mugshot. <laughs> hi, Sylvia's mugshot. Thank you for becoming a member. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Hi, Shella. Hi, honey. My beautiful moderator's in the his house. Triple Red X. Hi. How are you, honey? Hi, Lynn Tubbs. Hi, Sanders RN23. Hi, Keith Williams. Keith Williams, are, we, are you related to anybody on my show tonight? Just a question. Just a question. Um, Forever Tanya. Hello. Hi, Annette GL. Hello. Uh, oh, you repping the Windy City? You must be with guest in the back. Is this person related to you, Keith? Is Keith related to you? No? Oh, okay. All right. But he's from the Windy City. It might be your cousin. Um, hi, Kimberly Black. How are you? Hi, Azure. Azure is here. Hi, Mons 820. Lexi the Law Nerd. Hey, girl. Hey. Hi, Bridget Shepard. Julia Sutton, Baby Doll, Destined to Be, Lavette Hampton, True Relig Truth Religion. Hello. A work in progress is here. My name is not girl is here. Hey, CW. How are you? Hey, Red Lipstick Hustler Lily. How are you? Hey, T-Rain, Twilight, Retro in my fro. How y'all doing tonight? Okay. Look, if I missed anybody, please, please, uh, moderators, do me a favor and just um, say hello for me. All right. Also, I hope y'all hit the like button. I hope you did. I hope when you came into this video, you hit the like button. All right. I need you to hit the like button. I need you to subscribe if you haven't subscribed. And please share. Y'all can share it to Instagram, to Facebook. Facebook, to Twitter, to threads, to the email, to the text messages. I don't give a damn, just share it. And hello to the people over in Facebook watching me act a fool. I had to tell the people last time, look, Facebook people, I know y'all tend to know me more and better than the folks on YouTube, but over here on YouTube, we cut up sometimes. So uh, if you really want to know where the party is, come on over here to YouTube. Um, and um, we'll be more than happy to to welcome you over here, okay? Let me, um, speaking of Facebook, I probably should pull it up real quick just to make sure. Last time, my, um, my posts did not land in the Facebook chat like it was supposed to. So let me just make sure I can at least glance at it here and there. Let's see. Hold on, give me one second, y'all. All right, so we got a lot of hot topics we're going to discuss tonight with these um, two hot chicks, okay? We are going to discuss, of course, um, hold on one second. Let me make sure I got, got you guys in here. Hold on. Ooh. There we go. All right, so I can at least see my Facebook folks if they drop in. Okay, 
So here are some of the topics we're going to discuss tonight. We're going to talk a little bit about Club Shay Shay. Um, we're going to talk about the a Different World reunion that was happening uh, here recently. You probably heard some press about. We'll talk a little bit about that. We'll talk a little bit about Wendy Williams, um, just a little bit. And then we're going to talk about uh, just a little bit about this Shirley Strawberry Ernesto situation. And then last but not least, we're going to talk about um, Diddy and all of the things that have just transpired with his raid, recent raid. Okay. But first, let me introduce my special guest. Hey, it's not this week. Hi, the real VB. All right. So first, I'm going to invite back to the stage the one and only funny lady, beautiful, talented, um, can dance, can sing a little. This girl's just, just an all-around talent, okay? And with that said, I'm going to welcome back here Miss AJ Saunders. Hey, AJ. <laughs> hey, Mama. Good to see you. Thank you for having me back. Oh, I love having you on here. Are you kidding me? Um, one of my favorite interviews of all times. Um, <laughs> and then <laughs> last but certainly not least, um, the ingenue, the actress, singer, writer, author, all of those things, another beauty and talent in her own right. The one, the only, my friend and sister, Miss Cinda Williams. Hey, Hello. Cinda. <laughs> <laughs> How are you doing? Yeah, we've been talking about this for a while. I'm excited. Me too. I, know. I love you ladies so much. I was like, I got I want to do something with them together. And so I'm glad y'all have an honor for me. Look, it's mm -hmm. like my um, it's like a birthday treat to myself. I know my birthday was two weeks ago. It's still my birthday though, as long as March. <laughs> Thank you. So this I is just have to say, I just have to say, I'm probably one of one of millions of women that were very, very jealous of you back in the day, Cinda. Oh, Mo Better Blues, honey. Wow. I was like, oh, she's so lucky. <laughs> yeah. What part was lucky though, AJ? Huh? What part did you think was so lucky? Her being be able to be with Denzel and act, you know, you know, act with him and to work with him and you know, uh, even mm -hmm. back then, he was like, he owned the 90s. You know what I mean? That was like the beginning of his sex symbol status. I mean, you know, they that, that love scene, honey. Yeah. Yes, mm -hmm. ma'am. I mm -hmm. had me taking off my earrings like that from then on. From that point on. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I Look, wore big I earrings. Find myself on quoting, I find myself quoting that movie quite often, too, as a matter of fact. Um, and since, you're right. I knew what you meant. I just wanted to know if your thoughts about why why she was lucky was the thoughts that the rest of us that are not in Hollywood well, probably had. Okay. Well, yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, yeah. And uh, mm -hmm. you know, there was he was anyway. It was it was a lot. It was a lot. It was great. <laughs> and you know that part. That, so I'm, I'm still I'm still pissed off, pissed off at that part where he's when she said when you said something like she's wearing the same dress as me. I should something. And so he said, yeah, but you won't. And I was like, oh, I, ooh, you know, so, <laughs> I don't whatever. remember the lines. You remember more than I do. <laughs> uh, yeah, you just, yeah, I'm I like, I should, I should go over there and say something. And he said, yeah, but you won't. And I was like, oh, girl, I was anyway, it was, a, it was good. Thank you Thank so much. You. Great work. Yes, thank you. Yeah. One of my favorite. So there's two scenes mm -hmm. that I like the most where Cinda's concerned in that movie. One is um, um, when you first come over to his apartment for the first time or that mm -hmm. we see you and mm -hmm. you're like walking around him and you're explaining Mo Betta, what Mo Betta means and, you know, mm -hmm. what he means by it. And then just the way you were working him, I mean, you know, like the it just looked, it was so sexy and sophisticated and classy. In the sense that, yeah, it was classy too. And it, it's like that's what I wanted to be like, you know. I wanted to be right. that that image, you know. It's Don't so hilarious because I am nothing like that character. <laughs> 
character. I'm so goofy. I'm such a nerd. <laughs> nothing. There's nothing classy or glamorous about me. So I'm, but I'm an actress. That's what I do. <laughs> Girl, bye. You are. You are classy. And then my other. What's the other scene? Um, we never see scene? ourselves oh. as other people perceive us. Isn't that something? Mm -hmm. Because people think. I mean, I'm. I have my goofy moments, but people think that I'm like loud and you know, real boisterous um, because of the character that I portray on my on stage. Mm -hmm. But I am absolutely the exact opposite of that. So that's mm -hmm. funny. It's true. We never see ourselves the way we're perceived. No, no. And and it's it's um kind of cool. It's it's kind of it keeps you anonymous. It keeps your pri you private in your yeah. way. Especially yeah. because people think they know who you are, but they don't they don't know who you are. We don't know the half. <laughs> mm -hmm. So it's like your own little protection that you, mm -hmm. you can have around your yourself. Mm -hmm. I can see that. The Especially other thing I older. love the most. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I could say it. No, 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 you're fine. I was just gonna say the other scene I love the most, and it's gonna sound it's not a big scene. It's literally the one line in particular, but when Wesley comes into the record shop. The record mm -hmm. store by the record and the car declines the way mm -hmm. you say decline the way you did it i <laughs> holler every time and I, like, yeah. I did love that scene though i remember loving the scene because that was my idea you know he you know when when we were putting that movie together in the beginning the script it had a storyline but no real dialogue so a lot of that was our input in the whole tower records thing was was my idea because wow. he was like where does she work I'm like uh she works at tower records where else would she work she wants yeah. to be around the music and so it was really nice that he incorporated my ideas um, yes. mm -hmm. let me, and let me ask her. you this one last question because you just brought up something that i've always wondered always felt was true but you just sort of uh, confirmed it is that mainly how Spike used to write back in the day where he really would just kind of give the shell of the of the scene or the storyline, that sort of thing, and kind of let you guys ad lib? Because sometimes it did feel like it was just the natural words that the character would say based upon that actor mm -hmm. and not necessarily from a script. Yeah, it was definitely the first time that I dealt with that and, and not the last where I, you know, we actually had a lot of rehearsals and in the rehearsals, that's where everything got written. Um, we had the structure, we had, you know, this scene is gonna happen, this scene is gonna happen, but let's figure out what you say. And and we would rehearse and he would be writing. And um, yeah, but that was, you know, I came from theater where you gotta get A, the, and you know, or you're gonna find, you know, you gotta know every single word. So that was yeah. a great experience for me um, when it comes to improvisation and and actually being able to create on my feet. I think that's I was writing yeah. before that, but that really fed the writer in me to be able to do that. Mm -hmm. Well, then, you know, let me shift this conversation just a little mm -hmm. bit over to AJ. AJ, which mm -hmm. sort of, um, oh, Lord, before we do that, T-Rain. T-Rain, thank you so much. T Green just gifted 10 people memberships to oh, wow. uh, the Be Lenore show. Nice. So Yay. I feel very blessed um, when this happens. Lord have mercy. So let me see who um, actually got gifted. Lord have mercy. Um, Make It Rain was gifted. In Harmon, Michelle, The Only Whip. Um, I think this is. Oh, Lord, see, I can't see. Oh, none of us can see. Ebony. Ebony was gifted. Um, looks like Pat Lake Bailey. Wait, I guess I could have looked right over here. Patty Cake Bailey. All right. All right. Patty Cake Bailey. Marcy Smith. Uh, Kimberlane Johnson. Jazzy Lady. Miss mad about music all of you have been gifted a membership to the villanois show thank you so much. very Yay. sweet Rain. very nice very sweet awesome mm -hmm. so okay so back to aj aj yeah. yes there was recently a whole a different world reunion again 
I feel like they, there have been a couple that I know. I, I remember a few years back there was one. And then, what, a year or two ago, they did one with the red table. Um, yes. But this one recently was just announced. Was it announced on the Breakfast Club or somewhere else? But anyway, they, they've put together a new um, tour, little uh -huh. reunion tour. So how come we didn't see you in this in this reunion? Well, good question. And a lot of people have uh, inboxed me with the same question. I don't really know. Um, the only thing that I can pretty much uh, surmise with that is uh, maybe, like I said on my post, you're going to have to ask them why. But um, I think it's they they probably feel like they are the only that they are the the only cast members and they don't probably consider like the new school kids um a part of a different world if you will like i think i don't think that they um they didn't so let me just be 100 with it they didn't really like us hmm. you know what I mean? they didn't it, I, I think that it was cool when 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 i was you know just the under fiver or just the reoccurring but i think you know, um, t it, it was a little bit more tense or competitive, if you will, if uh, once I became part of the regular cast, it, uh, the, the vibe was different. And I don't know if it was because, I don't, uh, I suspect a, a few things, but I think maybe it was probably a little bit, you know, you know how we are when we're younger, we're a little bit more competitive and threatened by each other and like, wow, she's still here. And you know, and then here come Karen and here came Jada and here came Patrick and Bumper. And so then we formed this new little group um, that they started, you know, and I think what they don't realize is that we had so much respect and so much reverence for them as our senior cast members. I mean, we all like I know I did. We I looked up to them and I learned so much from them. And. I think what made the show, what gave the show even more life was that new energy that we brought, but we were really just trying to live up to the standard that they set, mm -hmm. you know? And, um, and so I think that when I see that happening, when I see them go on tour and stuff, first of all, I'm, I, I work on cruise ships and I've been traveling all over the world, you know? And so I've been super busy. I wouldn't have been able to go anyway or do it because I was already scheduled to work um, otherwise, but I think that they may have been missing a little bit of a, a, a few jewels by not inviting us because we added so much more life to the show. And, um, you know, Patrick had a very, um, very dramatic uh, part when he imitated Martin Luther King. And, you know, mm -hmm. my abuse episode was very, uh, mm -hmm important for a lot of people when they watched it mm -hmm. and it really impacted a lot of people and you know and then Jada's contribution was there was felt and so I don't know I don't know why they only wanted to do the five of them to tour but it would have been nice to at least add the new school flavor to it because a lot of kids still grew up on us too you know Absolutely. so but again you know I can't really speak for them so god bless them I think they had a successful run and good for them Hold on one second. T Rain, are you still over here blessing in the blessing business? T Rain, thank you for the $10 hey, super T chat. Ray. Thank you um, to you guys. Thank you. T Rain, you, you got a lot of money you. over there. Um, Let me give you my cash app. <laughs> <laughs> I'm telling you, I'm making, I'm breaking it in already. Yeah. Yeah. Um, let me. Something you said you said the five of them on this tour. Who are the who are the five? I think that I, I call them the five. I okay, okay, you go ahead then. Daryl, Kadeem, oh, Jasmine, uh, Cree, and uh, Charnel. Oh, it's six Dawn. of them actually because it's Dawn. So Dawn, Cree, Charnel, Daryl, Kadeem, Jasmine. Is it six or seven of them? Anyway. So I want to say, was Glenn term? Did I see him? Oh, Glenn could have been a part of it too. Yeah. Then I think that is all of it. So, 
But here's the thing. So it's like, well, all of those folks are not from the original cast. Like the only folks from the original, original cast is uh, Jasmine, um, uh, Kadeem, and, Kadeem. And, Daryl. and Dawn. Oh, and Dawn. Right. Yeah. And then I think, so then, well, I think Jasmine, Kadeem, Daryl, and Dawn, I think. I think they were there from yeah. the very beginning. Yeah. Yeah. But I mean, but you know what? Who knows? You know what I mean? Like a lot of people were kind of, you know, expecting me to be, I don't really feel any way about it. I just, I feel like it would have been cool if, you know, the new school would have been part of it because we added so much more to the standard that they set. And, um, mm -hmm. and it would have just, it would have just been fun. <clears throat> Mm -hmm. It would have been fun. I think we all would have enjoyed it. And even if uh, if they're going on this little tour, it'd be great if they incorporate it like, OK, so if you're in L.A., the, have these people come out. If you're in Chicago, who was, you know, repping Chicago at the time, maybe have different cast members show up based upon where they were going. I mean, that would have been cool, too, you know, but yeah, you know, whatever. You're still our favorite. Doesn't matter, AJ. You're mm -hmm. our girl. Listen, I'm so grateful to have been a part of that. I'm my, I'm still my favorite. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's uh -huh. like, you know, it's 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 fine. I mean, and I'm grateful that life is taking me where it's taking me, and you know, and I'm grateful for the recognition of being on there, and it it you know it served me very well, and I learned a lot. I learned a lot uh, about because that was my very first anything that I'd ever done. So it was nice to uh, learn from the best, I will tell I you. Say. I mean, Debbie Allen and Diane Carroll and Josephine yeah. Permise and please, Patti LaBelle. Patti LaBelle. Yeah, it was crazy. So, I mean, I I would never trade any of that, that experience. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. It's just, it, it makes me sad though that would it had, I, I guess we'll never know this, but would that have happened on a show with Caucasian actors? No, mm. no, it wouldn't. Mm. Have. And 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 it and and you know, I I would say Friends comes to mind. You know, because I remember when uh, one I remember hearing the story about one or two of them getting a raise, and they all stood together and um, until everybody got the same amount. I think it was like a million dollars an episode or something. Oh, yes. Yes, it was. So I think they all stood up together. I remember. Yeah. I, that, I just was, don't under... It, I I wonder what it'll take till we, we find that bind. We find that, you know, if we lock arms, we'll be stronger kind of thing. I, listen, I agree with you. And I feel like we can't, you know, there's more strength in numbers, mm -hmm. obviously. And... Once we decide and understand that we can all eat and not compete with each other, especially when we're Thank all you. doing the same thing, right? Like, there was nothing that we could have taken anything away from them, you know what I mean? There was nothing mm -hmm. that we and we didn't want to, like, mm -hmm. again, we were looking up to them, like, oh, we that's Jasmine Guy, wow, like, mm -hmm. you know, I can't, you know, I remember feeling like. Okay, AJ, don't don't f this up because you know people are watching. You know what I mean. And I was I wanted to make sure that I didn't uh, you know stink up the place. You know what I'm saying. So I I worked even harder just so I could you know earn my place there. And I don't know if they saw it that way. Um, and it's this 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 um, intrinsic this this lack mentality. That's what it comes to. It's like there's yes. not enough. There's not enough when. There's absolutely plenty, you know, I, and I, and I know it seems like it's not, but I think if we stuck together, there'll be way more, you know, mm -hmm. I, I agree. way more. Mm -hmm. Just stop being threatened by the other and just, you know, just be comfortable in our own skin and be comfortable with our own, our own lane and just, you know, be, be okay with it. And so I, I like to cheer people on, you know, I, I want to, I want everybody to win. That's how exactly. I've always been. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, I, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't understand. And it's okay. Yeah. You know, I, I do respect and accept the fact that people are not going to be the same as I am. So, um, but I definitely would. And I see the longevity in, uh, I see the, I, I like playing the long game, right? So right. listen, 
if 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 this if adding more people to the to the party is going to help us grow and be bigger and better, why not? Mm-hmm. But, right. Um, mm-hmm. Not everybody sees it that way. So. Yeah, I mean, you're adding more people, which means you're accessing maybe other people in the audience that you normally wouldn't access. You put more seats, more butts in the seats. I mean, you know, mm-hmm. I don't understand. It benefits mm-hmm. everybody when mm-hmm. you when you diversify and when you grow. And in it, in order to uh, create growth, a lot of the times you have to grow. You have to put out more, right? So I don't mm-hmm. understand why they don't see that. Just from you know what really gets, you know what really trips me out, especially and I've seen this just in 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 Black Hollywood um, in general is a lot of times um, people treat people the same people that complain about not getting the opportunities are the same people that shut other Rock. people out when they get to that point. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So I've, I've noticed that a lot too. It's like, wow, this happened to you, but you're doing the same thing that was that was done to you. Like, so strange. Okay. Mm. So, so strange. Yeah. Yep. Okay. We got work it's to do. Well, people we will teach work. me what to do and people will teach me what not to do. So mm-hmm. I know exactly. that whenever I see a young comedian, especially if, she, if it's a woman, I make sure that I embrace her to the best of my ability as long, you know, with her consent. But I'm all I I love to bring people along, you know, because mm-hmm. that's what keeps the family going, you know. Mm-hmm. So I just want y'all Thank to know you. that um she's an introvert, says she loved both of you ladies in the 90s, beautiful souls. Thank you so much. I'm gonna love them in the 20, 2020s too. Okay. <laughs> just as beautiful and just as talented. And and out here still doing their thing. So yeah, we you know, just grown, know. grown now. We grown. Yeah, yeah y'all, <laughs> really, y'all real grown. Okay. Mm-hmm. And and it's been great growing with you guys. You know, mm-hmm. growing with you all. I know that both of you inspired me in many ways. And I never thought I'd be sitting here with both of you talking to you at this point. Mm-hmm. But I know back then you both meant something to me. So just so you know. Mm-hmm. Thank Aww. you, baby. Thank you. Just saying. Okay, so with that said, um, I have not asked you ladies what your thoughts are on this subject, uh, but I did tell you that I was going to talk about it. And I want to talk a little bit about Fonnie Willis, who is the uh, district attorney out of uh, Fulton County in Georgia. Fonnie Willis and her her ex-boo, um, Nathan Wade, and the entire uh, defense team for Trump and his um, cohorts, if you will, his his co-defendants. Have you guys were you guys pay, paying attention to the whole hearing and everything? Well, you were you were overseas, I believe, um, AJ. So I don't know how much um, you caught up, but I saw I saw I saw a little bit of it. I didn't watch the whole proceedings, but I saw a little bit of it. Um, you, you saw clips. Yeah, I saw clips. Okay. What about you, Cinda? Yeah, just a little bit. You know, I I, um, I know um, V. You were you were talking about it quite a bit, and I caught some of your your conversations about it, and and I think we even saw a clip, and I just loved how she didn't back down. You know. Uh, in her own defense and, and standing up mm-hmm. for herself, she was very. She seemed very powerful. There is so so much desperation happening, you know, to shut things down before this election. Um, mm-hmm. They're just grasping for straws, and you, though maybe it wasn't a good idea to pursue a romance at um, when they were trying to get get something so important done. You know, but people are people and shoot, if I met my boo, I might be like that too. I'm like, I don't care. <laughs> right. Yeah. No, and I would I will also like to say that I think men do that all the time. Mm-hmm. You know, especially in that position. You know, I think men you know, have hired women that they have been attracted to, uh, mm-hmm. to be a part of their campaigns, to be a part of their, you know, office workspace or what have you. And I I, I think, you know, I'm wondering what what's the I was trying to figure out what the big deal was, like, where, where's the conflict? So I see the conflict in terms of, you know, the campaign or the thing against Trump. So I 
understood that point part, but to villainize so to vilify her was I don't know. I just felt like it was there was some type of other agenda. It was a distraction on. to me. It was just it, all of yeah. it's a distraction. It's not real. They're just yeah. saying saying whatever they can say to to get us off the real subject, which is True. you know, we have a felon running who should be a felon running for president and they're just trying to bypass all of this into this election, hoping he wins so it can all go away. Yeah. You know? So let me just for those of you who have been living under a rock and have no idea what we're talking about. Um, so DA Fonnie Willis is uh, leading the prosecution against Trump and several of his several co-defendants that uh, were trying to steal the 2020 election. And so as a deflection, I believe as well, Cinda, a deflection from what's really going on, what the real issue is, they decided to turn the tables around on the prosecution team. And that includes DA Fonnie Willis and her special prosecutor who she hired um, by the name of Nathan Wade. Now, both Nathan Wade and um, Bonnie Willis are former judges themselves, um, obviously attorneys, and um, she is the most powerful attorney, if you will, uh, in DA in um, the state of Georgia. So there are all eyes on her because never before have we seen, you know, a sitting president being, or not sit sitting president, but a living president or any president being um, prosecuted for trying to steal an election. Um, it, it's just unheard of. So the fact that um, we are here and a black woman is at the helm of, of bringing this to action, I think that was immediately going to cause problems. Now, here's the other thing. Yes, I agree. I would have preferred that she had not dated the man too, just because I wouldn't want them to use it as a weapon. But the truth is they shouldn't be using it as a weapon because it is not against any law, policy, or rule in the state of Georgia for uh, the DA to date co-counsel or even opposing counsel. Like they can date each other. Like there's no rule anywhere that says anything about that. Now, what they were really supposed to be focusing in on was uh, the, the conflict was supposed to be that she had somehow uh, received some sort of financial gain by hiring this man. Mm -hmm. And they wanted to prove the financial gain as being these trips and vacations and possible meals. What, what they were talking about was a, no more than ten or $12,000 tops. But Nathan was paid around six hundred thousand to do his job. Now, look, that's I ain't got nothing to do with that. I ain't gonna knock the man. He was able to get a, a six hundred thousand dollar gig, so so be it. But she didn't do anything that was against the law or policy. So that first day that we saw them as a part of this disqualification uh, hearing. And she came in there, not the first day that they held it, but the day we saw her on the stand. I couldn't, I, when I tell you, I was jumping out of my skin so excited. I was sitting right here in this chair, working, supposed to be doing other work, but had that on. And as it came on, it was just so interesting. I literally went live at that point and just <laughs> did a watch party because when that sister came in there and started bossing them people around and telling them what she wanted, I had never in my life seen someone sit on the stand where you're supposed to be questioned. And she told them, okay, I need these three documents. I need this, this, and this. And these people scattered and went and got that shit and brought it right back to her. She asked somebody else for her glasses and it came. And it wasn't until I was talking to someone else later that I realized, oh, she's the boss of everybody in that room. The bailiffs, the court reporters, mm. the, the prosecuting attorneys, everybody reports to her in real life. So they all ran and, and did what she needed done. And that judge used to be her subordinate. So he used to work for her as well, which wow. is probably why he showed so much respect for her too. I felt like he showed a lot of respect. But the part that I love the most, child, two or three times, two or three things, was when she sat down, told everybody what to do. 
And when she told that woman, the uh, defense attorney for one of the co-defendants, she said, look, what I'm not confused about is that I am not on trial. No matter how mm -hmm. confused you may be, I'm not confused. Mm -hmm. They're on trial, not me. Right. Right. When she told them that and she, the girl says something else trying to suggest that the man had lived with her and she was like, uh, no, but that's cute. When she did all of that, <laughs> yeah, I was like, I'm here for it because like I said, everybody, every job I've ever been on where someone was either misusing me, mishandling, disrespecting me, that is what I wanted to do. Mm -hmm. And here she was, and she was able to do it. She could do it. She she knew how far she could go. She's a freaking ex-judge. She's a damn mm -hmm. prosecutor. She knows how much is too much and what is too little and what they will use and what they want. And I was just happy she, she did the one thing I'm sure many of us have wanted to do in the face of our bosses or anybody else who right. play, play with us. She handled yeah. it. So that's mm -hmm. my diatribe on it all. <laughs> But when mm -hmm. I tell you, you guys have to go back and see some of the other scenes where she she gets them together. She she um, I loved her father, too. Did you see that? Her Baby, father let me tell you something about the dad. I was going to bring that up. He look. OK, so first of all, she should have kept him at home because he was just. Let me tell you something. It's 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 a it's black people. It's a black thing. <laughs> I was like, oh, Lord, not the it's father. A black thing. People, black people, but you we know, hide our money. I was like, "Daddy, please be quiet. Please don't give." Oh Lord, don't don't bring him back to the barbecue. He was hilarious. No, but he's a civil rights attorney. I wasn't afraid about him either. I mean, I get it, but he just uh uh. I was like, "Girl, no, don't be okay." I understand. But I see, understand, but I he corroborated her story that she had cash True. in the house. She had, she'd been taught how to keep money on her at all times. Yeah, that was the way he said it. Yeah, that was the way he said it though. It's black people, <laughs> the black people. We, we, I was like, oh, jeez. He said, oh, well, Judge, I, I don't mean to be racist, but uh, it's the black thing. It's the black right. thing. Oh, <laughs> Lord. I was like, Dad, okay, Dad, come on now. We're going to have to put you back in the, at the house. Come on now. Anyway, <laughs> I, I enjoyed it. I, you know, I didn't see very much, but I just saw clips. But I did like her swag, and I did like the way she held her own. You know, mm -hmm. I could appreciate it and respect it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, she did. She just look. I got way too excited about it. Okay, I just want you to know, I was way too excited. <laughs> I was over here screaming out loud. I was hollering. I was rewinding. I loved oh. it. Okay, that was great. My dad me. would have embarrassed the whole family. <laughs> My daddy would have cussed everybody out. My daddy would have, he would have forgot he was under oath. Oh, Lord. Exactly. I, said, I, think that's, I think that's what triggered me a little bit. I was like, oh, Lord, <laughs> not the father. Because I was just thinking about my dad. My dad is crazy. <laughs> so, anyway, yeah. Child, my mama would have been the same. Yes. Lord. Okay. All right. So, we'll move on from there. Okay. Last time you were here, AJ, we talked about. Uh, Club Shay Shay. We talked about Cat Williams being on Club Shay Shay, where okay. he set these he set these streets on fire at the beginning of the year. He and did. since he's been since you've been on here, he had Monique come on, and she yeah. I was just watching. Uh, I was just watching ja, ja Godfrey on there too. He's so good. Yes. Mm. Yes. He's yes. so good to look at too. Him. I like looking at him. Godfrey, no, I didn't. I've been having a crush on Godfrey like since the '90s, so he already knows. So I, it's no secret. But like he, but he's so talented too, though. I really love his his work and the way he, he impress, impersonates people. He's so yep. great. Love watching yep. him. I'm sorry, but what was the question? <laughs> See, uh, I'm no, sorry. No, okay. what? You know what I mean? A black. You? We're talking about a black five men. Talking I'm about like, oh, oh, stuff. We were talking about what was important. Catholic, okay, African. Build oh. like yeah, talented. Oh, like there's too many things. Okay, all of that beautiful mm -hmm. smile, yeah, just the whole thing. I'm sorry, but I digress. <laughs> what was what, what, what was the question? <laughs> no, I don't even know. Um, no, what I was gonna say is no, and I appreciated Godfrey being on there too because he was very honest. He even said some things about how people have you know played him 
uh, dirty mm -hmm. in the business and that yeah. everybody doesn't uh, welcome another talented person in their space. Or people right. will smile in your face and say, oh, you're great and I love you. Or let's do something and then you never hear back from. Them. Welcome to my mm -hmm. world. Welcome to our world. Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. I'm not in comedy, obviously, but it's no different. In no, all across no. the board, it's no different. Yeah, that's what mm -hmm. happens. That's what happens. And the and and so um I, I would imagine you know Cinda would feel the same way or agree with me that, you know, when that sort of thing happens and it's happened to all of us, the, the, the key is to maintain, you know, uh, your goals and, and stay focused on what you're trying to do, you know, mm -hmm. and not bring that into your, uh, personal life and allow that to make you bitter, allow it to make you better instead. Um, but, but, to, you know, don't hold on to, I think that's, the, the only issue I take up with Monique is that, you know, she's holding on to, here's how I really feel. I'm trying to sound real, I'm trying to sound real professional, but here's how I really want to say it. No, you say wasted, how you want to say it. You, yeah. you, wait, you wasted 10 whole years being mad at somebody that don't give a shit about what you think. Mm -hmm. Well, which one are you talking that's, about? Because she's mad at a bunch of people for 10 years. That's what, period. Okay. Whoever it is, you wasted 10 whole years of your life that you can't get back mm -hmm. over people that have moved on and ain't thinking about you. Yeah. And, yep. you know, and so the key for me is to learn the lesson. Again, learn what not to do and keep it pushing. She's got she's got an, an Oscar. She's got an uh, what she got? a. Um, Image award. She she's got a. I don't think. She, and then she's got like a People's Choice. She got like four a SAG award. A, like, girl, you got, you got the, you got the cloud. You got the cachet. Use that and don't worry. Bless them. Release them. Move on. Those people are gonna keep doing what they're gonna do and keep being who they are. You go yep. be who you are and go mm -hmm. use your talent and your gifts. You still have an open door, so that's that's been my only thing about Monique. You have the talent, you have the gift, you've got the cachet, you got the clout. Go use that in, to your advantage instead of allowing this, these two, three, four people to hold you down with this resentment and this bitterness because they don't mm -hmm. care. And and I right. know she was one of the things she talked a lot about was about how she lost money, you know, her family lost money and blah blah blah. I'm like, yeah, but you're sitting here talking about it, so obviously you didn't lose enough to lose your life. You you weren't right. homeless. You weren't you weren't. There's so many things that, that that I could say about my own experiences, which are honestly extremely similar to hers. Um, and you know, no, no tit for tat. No, you got it better than me, but you're here talking about it. You have an audience that's listening to you that cares about you enough to listen to you talk about it. And mm -hmm. it's just to me, a waste of energy. Yes. It's, it's a waste of energy and it's a waste of, of, of your energy, your own air, just, just not even about everybody else that's tuning in and, and, and feeding off of this negative low vibration crap, but you're not, it's not pushing you forward to, right. to stay mad and about some measly dollars. I'm sorry, dollars are important, but once that 10 years is over. Let's start here today and move forward. Uh, and, and what you're going to do with that, you know, unless that's what she thinks that coming out about old stuff is going to push her well, forward. I, I don't know that it's going to, because I don't think people, I, they can't get past the, the anger. People can't get past the, the angst and they don't want to see your face. You know, they don't want to see you anymore. And I'm not going to pay, you know, $100 to go watch you on stage when, when you're mad all the time. I want to laugh. You're not yeah. funny. That's not yeah. funny. Yeah. yeah. And everybody well, has something that, you know, everybody, people that come watch comedy, we, they come to get away from their own reality yes. for a little bit. Yes. You know, and so our job is to entertain and to make sure that they have a good, a memorable, good experience. And, 
you know, that's just the way I work. And I, again, trust me, I have a whole lot of people that I can be like, well, this, mm-hmm. one said this, this one did this and F that person and fuck this dude. And I, blah, 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 blah. I, I have a laundry list. If I would, if I choose to focus mm-hmm. on that, those people and what they did and how they did it and what, then I would never have room to be creative mm-hmm. and write anything new and be happy in my own life, you know? And, um, cause you know, life is what it is. And, and so uh, I just, I don't know. I just, I can't operate in that negative space. Like I can only operate when I, you know, when it's, when I'm clear and when I'm, you know, free from that stuff. And so forgiveness mm-hmm. is very important. A lot of people don't understand but forgiveness has nothing to do with the other person. You know what I mean? It has right. everything to do with free. It, it's, it's about getting ourselves free from that experience, you know? And, mm-hmm. um, and so the first step for me is always just forgiveness. Okay. You know what? God bless them. Mm-hmm. I hope let you me, bless them. You know what I let mean? Me and challenge just your th- let me challenge your thoughts here though, for a minute regarding why Monique might be talking so much and so frequently over the last few years. And while I agree with everything you all said, I also believe that people do things because there is a benefit from doing it, right? So you and I may see her talking this way as being a reason why a lot of people continued not to hire her right away or did not honor her in the way in which she had hoped that they would honor her. But the truth is sometimes people like drama and sometimes people like the negativity or the attention that the negativity brings them as well. It's and short-sighted. Oscar, it is very short-sighted. And and she's a whole Oscar winner out here mm-hmm. functioning this way. But I just think that she gets some benefit out of being a, a victim. But please let me say something uh, about this. There's this whole concept of I'm telling the truth. I'm telling the truth. This is the truth. And everybody should be telling the truth. And these people got to be stopped. So I'm telling the truth. And my thing about it is, first of all, there are many aspects to the truth. Whose truth? Your perception of the truth, my perception, it, it might not be the same. The stuff that has happened to me, I'm sure the other people involved see it in a very different way. Yeah. Right? Everybody has their version of what's true. Mm-hmm. And if it's true for you, why? That's all that matters. Mm-hmm. It's true for you. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? And yeah. the only benefit is, is is the attention that it gives you. And, you know, I there there are some children that will do things in order to get a spanking or get called upon or get a timeout because it gives them attention. That's what this feels like to me. Yep. It feels like I need yep. any kind of attention at all. Just give me some play. Please pay attention to me. And they need yep. that. It feeds them. They feel better about them. Even if it's negative attention, it's attention. And, and you know, that whole thing, you know, you know, no news is bad news, but if any kind of, you know, if it's bad news, it's okay. But it's it's short sighted because you, while you have this flash in the pan of your truth, you know, which mm-hmm. is probably very true for you, it is not going to get you that long term career that every actor and comedian wants. We want to be doing yes. this stuff, you know, till till the day we drop, and and yes. and you're ruining your chances of that career and you have everything you need to have that career. It doesn't matter how you look. doesn't matter how much you weigh. What you do, you can do forever unless you screw it up. And that short-term attention thing, that, that's that's just not going to give you longevity. That's going to give you a flash in the pan, some quick bucks here and there. Talking about screwing your family over financially. I mean, you're doing that. You know, what's the legacy? The legacy is going away with your words, with your truth. Mm-hmm. You know, that's just my but, opinion about but it. But you see, well, I think that people, some some, this, I, oh, okay. I, you, know, you know how sometimes, you know, like my mother used to always say, some people ain't happy unless they're miserable. You know, that's, that's what I'm saying. Some people, some people really like, some people like uh, playing that victim. I'm a victim. Look at, look at what they did to me. 
Like, uh, right. you know, I, I, I agree with what Cinda just said, because I feel like, first of all, it's just, it, it just, it's just bad for your looks. You know, when you mad all the time, <laughs> it's bad you know, for your right. health. Bad for your health. Right. Bad for your looks. Bad for just and 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 the bad. It's just the negative energy is draining. Mm -hmm. You know, and uh, again, like she said, if it's if it's only true for you, like I know, I'm clear. Like whenever if I decide to write a book, which I'm working on right now, but it's it's a very slow process. I only share my experience. Mm -hmm. I only share my perspective, my perception of things, especially like compared to like how I was in my 20s compared to how I was mm -hmm. in my 30s and 40s. Like mm -hmm. I, I see things so differently than I did in my 20s, you know, especially Absolutely. when I was in that in that environment and what people said to me and how I received it and how it filtered into my brain. So today I would probably probably respond and think differently about how people approached me back then. You know, or what they said to me back then. Back then, I responded the way a 25 person, year old person would have responded. But I wouldn't right. respond to that today at this particular mm -hmm. stage yeah. of my in my development. So so my goal is to continuously I'm always striving to get better and to grow and to see the world as it is and not as I perceive it. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And that and that includes my own self image, my own self worth, my own self value. Like. So when I go on stage, it's completely different. And my confidence is completely different because I'm not begging for that attention. I'm not, I'm not trying, I'm not, uh, I'm, I'm not looking for approval. I'm just here to add value, mm -hmm. you know? And so when I come from that perspective, I'm a lot more confident and a lot more comfortable in my own skin. And because mm -hmm. every comedian is very insecure, we're all looking for, you know, I want them to like, cause you just don't know. Like every night, mm -hmm. it's a whole, it's, it's ground zero. Like there's no band to back us up. You know, we don't have no mm -hmm. background singers. We ain't got no dance troupe, <laughs> you know? Mm -hmm. So it's Unless you're us. Bernie Mac. Unless you're Bernie Mac with the macaroni band and the macaroni dancers, the Mac band and the macaroni dancers. That was beautiful though. And he's a king, but go ahead. <laughs> right. But as a, as a, as a pure stand-up, you know, as, as a stand-up yeah, no. artist, I mean, that's all we have is so, so it's, Absolutely. so it's understandable that we come, we, we come off that way. We're always looking, you know, laughter is approval for us. So, but, right. But if we don't grow, then we're, we're going to be in our fifties still feeling like that 20 something year old person hungry for <laughs> thirsty for you to approve of us. So now it's like, okay, I'm here to add value. I know what my person, I know what my purpose is today. I know what I'm, but I can't get here if I'm holding on to what that person said to me back in 1994. You know what I mean? Right. It's, it's it's useless because clearly that person ain't thinking about what happened in 1994. So I'm holding on to something that don't even exist anymore, and. Mm -hmm. You know, I remember I saw Oprah when she re when somebody asked her a question about Monique and she and I have my opinions about Oprah. Don't get me wrong. OK, I got my opinion and it's strong, but I save that for my act. Mm -hmm. I don't bring that into my real life. And so Oprah was like, oh, well, you know, I don't I don't uh, I don't I don't bring that energy. You know, it's all about negative energy. I don't bring that energy. In. I don't I never. And I was like, yep, there she is. Mm -hmm. And I'm thinking about Monique. I'm like, Monique, you're 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 harping on something that nobody is willing to even give energy to but you. So mm -hmm. again, and they I, don't care. They, they don't, don't care what Oprah did to you. They, they don't, don't they don't care what Tyler did. They don't care what anybody did. They just want to be entertained. That's it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And but that's part of this. She they are being entertained by your complaining and all of that but it's is it the kind of entertainment that they're going to want to continue watching once it gets old you know you've told the story now you've told the story yeah. part of part of being entertaining is being mysterious and not just spewing it all you know people want to learn more about you and if you just spend all of your time whining you know then you mm -hmm. get boring yeah it's, it's cool yeah. for a while but then it's boring yeah. Well, you bring up two good points, um, Cinder. Well, one in particular, I want to—I just want to say to all, to both of you: What if 
the reason why she harps on such negativity is because it has always been her thing. It's it's what's, what's familiar to her. Maybe even as a child, she had to function a certain way or, or make certain complaints in order to get any level of real attention, especially if she was harmed by her sibling, as she says, you know, she was always a victim. And so maybe that was what she was used to in order to get real attention or love from what she understood it to look like. I don't know. That's yeah, but when you're about. a victim, people feel sorry for you. They don't care about you. I don't want nobody feeling sorry for me. You know what I'm saying? So it very well might be what she she learned and how she survived and coped. I, I have no judgment of her any in in her psychological makeup or whatever. I'm no, you know, I'm not a psychiatrist. I am a hypnotherapist, but you know, I recognize certain things, and and we certainly do. We're all children when we get triggered. We're all we all go back to that you know little little kid that was you know, treated a certain way and, and, and all of that. But then you have to let the forward part of your, your brain start working. And remember that that's all that stuff is, was horrible, but you survived it and it's dead. It's over. It's done. Unless you keep it alive. If you keep it alive, then it'll never die, but it'll only never die for you. It'll die for your audience. It'll die for the people that you're talking about. It'll die for everybody but you. And you're the only one left behind, you know? So, so yeah. I, I agree well, with that. I, I, I also know that there are some areas in my life that I had to do a little bit of work on. Mm -hmm. You know, I had to, uh, I had to, I had to work on some areas of my life that I knew that, um, were holding me back. And, mm -hmm. um, and and so I feel like if if that's if if there are some things in in this, and I'm not a psychologist either. I'm only speaking about my experience. But I know that being free from that stuff today is a blessing and it's a gift. Mm -hmm. And you know, mm -hmm. I used to blame my father for a lot of stuff. You know, ooh, if I had had a better relationship with him, I would have chose better men. You know, that kind of thing. So when I stopped playing the blame game and started looking at and just really looking at what's on my plate and wondering and, and, and asking myself, how can I make this better? What do what power do I have in me to make this better and to make better choices? Then my, then then those those doors started to open up, you know, and I started to be less bitter and I started becoming more forgiving because 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 my father, my me and my father's relationship is a lot more loving today. And so now I'm able to look and go, you know, those times that I was feeling a certain way, I can understand and have compassion for him that, you know, look at his, how he grew up and I can under, I can have a better mm -hmm. level of understanding about his journey rather than just blaming yeah. him for whatever. So mm -hmm. again, yeah. I think that it's important to whatever it is that we struggled with or whatever harmed us as young people, it's, it's, it's our responsibility to go get help with that. You know, and whatever that may look like, whether it's therapy or some mm -hmm. type of recovery program or whatever, it's it's really for me. It's it was best for me to go get help with that and be honest with myself and look and in the mirror and go, okay, what? How can I make this different? You know, what, what can I yeah. do? What do I want out of this life that's mm -hmm. been given? To me? So the problem is, so many people don't know that there's a problem. That sure. that that's a. I mean, if you you are like off to the races if you know that you need help you you're you're very healthy if you know you yeah. need help but so many yeah. people get so caught up in in the victimhood that yeah. they don't see anything wrong with themselves they never take accountability they never take responsibility for their own lives and their own choices it's always someone else's fault and so they don't get the help because they can't see that they need the help and that's mm -hmm. that's unfortunate, you know, and, and I think there are a lot of uh, creatives who, I mean, you know, if you're going to be honest, the best are the most damaged. You know, we, yeah. we, we've lived some heck, a heck of our lives. Our lives are not boring. We have a lot yeah. to pull from. That was That's what everybody's like. How do you play such dark characters? I was like, because I was miserable. I mean, the easiest <laughs> emotion for me to pull was tears and, and anger because that's how mm -hmm. I was inside. But I recognize that and I got help and I'm better and I can still pull on that.
Right. I can also make you laugh. I can also make you smile now because now I can laugh and smile. That's but, right. mm-hmm. but there are some people that are just, and I believe we are all the same. We're all of God. We're all creators. We're all these things. It's just some of us, this was the best example I was given. And I just loved it. It was like, there's a, there's a road to enlightenment, but then there are many branches off of that road. You can go right to enlightenment, like, you know, the greats, like Jesus, like Buddha, or you can take all these other branches, but they all take us back to that road of enlightenment. Everybody's going to get there. It's just certain people are going to take a little longer because mm-hmm. of whatever choices they made in spirit to 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 learn these lessons and, 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 and to agitate the world. Because since we are connected, we... You know, we need agitators to shake things up. You know, everybody hates on Trump. Everybody hates on all these people that, you know, do all these crazy things. But they're changing things. They're causing great shifts in us because we want to stop that way of thinking. We want to. And Monique, in a way, for me, is kind of like that agitator, you know, yeah. and and she's shaking up some things. She's making people think about some things that they might not have. So while it might hurt her personally, she might be making our business better. Well, yeah. but let's look at it from this perspective. What if what if um, some of that? See, I think that you're right. I feel like you have to recognize what part you play in the process, what things you're doing that's attracting that same thing over and over again. When I said earlier, too, that I feel like maybe drama or being the victim is familiar to her because honestly, I rarely hear her out here talking about any project she's working on. I hear her talking about the same shit that she's been talking about for years, which makes me think, okay, as a child, you know, she was a victim to what happened in her family. Then you get older. She's a victim of being overweight and maybe skinny bitches, as she would put it, would would give her hell from that. Um, She was also a victim of not only Tyler Perry and Lee Daniels and Oprah, but of um, Netflix. Now, and then she's a victim of D.L. Hughley. Like every time I hear her talking about a situation, she's the victim in the story. Now, Mm -hmm. I see her also as being a successor in many ways. But I don't hear her talking about the things in which she succeeded at doing. I see most of the focus placed on what she's a victim of. When I when I saw her, when I some of some of my best jokes are from horrible experiences. Mm -hmm. You know, I talk about my divorce and what happened and all of that. I talk, I get, I get very personal, and so that's the beauty of being able to, you know, uh, compartmentalize. Um, a negative experience and being able to turn that into a cathartic experience, right? Um, when I hear, when I heard about, when I saw her son come forward and talk about his perspective on about things, to ask you. Um, mm-hmm. it made me go, huh, you know, and um, and then they now she's then a she victim of him and, too. Right. She came back and she had excuses. So again, it's, it's, it's been helpful, helpful to me to hear the truth as it is spoken or displayed or demonstrated to me and really take a hard look at it before I respond, you know, and, and so, but that's, that's the work that I get, I've gotten a chance to, to do, you know, is like, okay, let me see if this if there's any truth to what's been said to me before I react or respond. Mm, and if there sure. is, let me take a hard look at it and let me, you know, and let me humble myself and go, you know what? I, you know, that's I didn't I didn't know that I had done that. I wasn't aware that I had behaved that way or please forgive me for my conduct or what. I mean, there's no humility in that. And what I really was disappointed about. And don't get me wrong, like, I don't have any beef with Monique. Like, I am so grateful at that crowd that she's able to have accomplished everything that she has. I think it's she's great. But when I saw her special, I was like, oh, she missed it. Because Mm -hmm. what I would have loved to have seen was I would have loved to have seen her 
talk about how she came from being in special education all the way up to winning an Oscar. Nobody right. has that story. Right. right. I right. love happy endings. I love victorious, you know, triumphant arcs. You know what I mean? So I'm looking mm -hmm. for the, oh, so she going to take us to this on this journey. Okay. So she's going to take us to Oscar night, but she never got mm -hmm. there because it was still, we were still in that other place, you know, and she took us someplace else. So again, her right to do that, you know, and God bless her. But I was, ex I would have loved to have seen her talk about how, how she, how I would have loved to have seen her talk about how she won, like how mm -hmm. she overcame and how she succeeded in spite of her beginnings, you know, right. because everybody loves that kind of story. So mm -hmm. that's just, that's just the way I saw it. Some, some people are, you know, this is in psychology. They, they say that, you know, people, I don't, I don't understand the, the neurological side of things or the whys, but I know that they say that people naturally focus on negative more than they do positive. So I don't ever forget when Mo Better Blues came out, I, you know, it had reviews from theater and stuff, but there were all these great reviews and one negative one. And that's the one Zoom zoned in on and decided I'll never read another review. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Because that was in me to do that. And I think that, that, you know, those of us that are on one of these branches, you know, we, we focus more on the negative than we do on our, on our victories. Um, because yeah. mm -hmm. for some reason it feeds us more. You know, because you keep yeah. saying it, you know, V, what, how's it feeding her? How is it, how is she getting something out of this? It, it, there's something about that that has in her life, her example has been, and we're not just talking about Monique, but a lot of people, many folks, you know, we're mm -hmm. fed more at certain points in our lives by the drama, by the sadness, by mm -hmm. the struggle. I mean, we're literally mm -hmm. taught that, you know, no pain, no gain. We're taught you got to struggle. Mm -hmm. We're taught, you know, mm -hmm. you know, if it's not hurting, then it doesn't mean anything. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I just went through the whole illness where I was in pain for five years and held on to that stuff, thinking it was, you know, never getting other mm -hmm. opinions, you know, because I'm so used to suffering used to being hurt I'm used to that and and somehow it feeds my ego i'm so strong mm. i'm so amazing I've, I've survived so much you know look at me i'm great you know i can't i can't um brag so much about oh yeah i was born into a wealthy family or or i was born into a poor family but we didn't know we were poor because our family loved us so much that's a much more boring story to people you know, they want to hear about the tragedies, you know, they want to hear, you know, maybe we'll get one hopeful end. Okay. We went through all this hell, but then we, we turned out. Okay. You know what I'm saying? And for about five minutes, we're talking about the good stuff, just <laughs> humanity as a whole. We thrive yeah. on that negative stuff sometimes. And yeah, there is a, an explanation for it. I just don't remember. Yeah. We love looking at the car wrecks. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Can't take our eyes off of it. Mm -hmm. And and the thing I think about when I said too, like you like you just said, uh, said the, I, I feel like someone like Monique, maybe you know I know for us you know that are looking at this logically, we understand that pity is not love, but for some, the way pity shows up in someone's life, oh, I finally get someone to hold me and cuddle me and wipe my mm -hmm. tears and rub my mm -hmm. back and compliment mm -hmm. me and cheer me up. I don't get that unless I appear weak and vulnerable and a victim. Yeah. And, and, that and that's what really, that made me mad. I didn't like this. This was a part where I had to work on myself and my own judgment of her was when she was talking about the young lady from the color purple. She said, the only reason why they listen to her because she was whining and crying. You know, they were, she was, she was, you know, the, the young, beautiful Tamaki? actress. Yeah, Taraji. Taraji. She said the only reason why they pay her attention because the way she looks and because she was whining, looking all weak. You know, she that was her her comment that she was weak 
you know, but I don't, I don't mean no harm. I love her. I love her. But the only reason why they mm -hmm. listened to her and they didn't listen to me is because she was crying. I wouldn't cry. Yeah. I'm too strong. You know what I'm saying? It's like, throw that, sh throw her under the bus, please throw her under mm -hmm. the bus. Do right. exactly what you're talking against, please. It's right. like, oh gosh, it, it was like, well, it's so irritating. And mm -hmm. I had to, like I yeah. said, I had to get, get on myself and say no judgment because you don't know this woman. But I did not <laughs> feel that at all. I was like dogging that poor girl. Shoot. Right. I had someone mm -hmm. do this something similar to me too. Um, but there, it was something where, you know, we had an encounter with the same individual but uh, the response that people have for me was different than the response they have for Sorry. another woman. No, that's okay. The response they have for another woman and that woman felt like it was because she came across too strong and I came across too feminine. And I was like, mm. and that I somehow was using my femininity to manipulate the people to feel sorry for me. I was, mm -hmm. I'm just being me and, and expressing what happened or whatever. People saw things mm -hmm. for themselves. But I think that that does happen with some folks. They get resentful. They can't be in support of you because they really resent possibly what your experience has been versus their own. And that's not fair because we can all probably sit, sit and think about a time when our experience has been different. It could be the same situation, but we're going to have a different experience from it. And sometimes we play a part in that experience. That's all I'm saying. Yeah, I, um, I can't. I, I don't. I honestly can't stand it when people are like, oh, poor, oh, poor. Sin. I'm like, that ain't the reason I'm telling the story. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want your pity, please. I got over it. Like uh, today on my little walk, I do these things on um, TikTok, uh, these little short blurbs, and I was talking about actually a real person, someone, not me, but I didn't want to talk about them. So I talked about myself and I, in, in, you know, I talked about how, you know, I had someone in my life an authority that, that was very, you know, hard on me, you know, was constantly telling me it was wrong and they didn't know anything about what I did, but you know, you should be doing this and you should be doing what's wrong with you girl. And, and, and that became a voice in my head that I had to eliminate and recognize that it wasn't me. And so everybody, you know, so many people were like, Oh my gosh, Cinda, I'm just so sorry you went through that. You know, Ugh. like that's not the point. That's ah! funny. But yeah. you know, people are coming from their own perspective. Right. Again. That's how they hear it. That's how mm -hmm. they hear it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, remember mm -hmm. I was, I was married to this one dude and we were, uh, we were we were breaking up and and he was expressing to me about why uh he was he what he didn't like about me and what he said was you know you never um every time we had a disagreement you never you never fought you know mm -hmm. you never you never raised your voice and you never you know you didn't fight for us and i said well first of all you know when we were dating i told you i wasn't like a yeller, I'm not a screamer, you know, that, you know, I'm one of those people that likes to sit down and discuss instead of getting volatile and hostile because you can't really think clearly that way. Anyway, so he was just like, yeah, but you should have just, you know, threw something and you should have. And I was like, but that's not who I was. And that's who I told you I was. So I'm, that's not, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I think, I think pe there are certain people that interpret what love is, like you said earlier, exactly. what love is differently than the way, you know, because I was like, that's, you know, throwing something at, first of all, I like everything in my house. So I ain't going to throw nothing and break nothing at you. Mm, that's what I'm saying. saying. I want to keep all the shit that's in here. <laughs> <You know>? mm -hmm. <laughs> number right. one, you know, but number two is like, what, what's, what, why, why, why can't we come to, why can't we agree to disagree, but in a grown up fashion, but that's what he grew up with. He grew up with his parents fighting and dragging his mama up and down the hallway and stuff. And so I'm like, that's, not, you know, but I, but that's what I told you I was though. That's yeah, what I told you I was. And I think that people expect you to, oh yeah, that's what you say now, but you just, maybe it'll change whenever we get, you know, when once we're married, you know, no, that's who I am. And oh, so yeah. sorry, sorry to disappoint you, but that's, 
But that was one of the things that he he was like, yeah, I just, you know, you just didn't fight. You just didn't fight. I'm like, mm-hmm. oh, okay. well, I respect that. Good for him. Okay, mm-hmm. thank you for sharing that. But I'm and I'm not going to either, you know, because but fighting well, I looks that, different. I had that same thing. <laughs> huh? I say? was gonna say fighting looks different. So here's the thing: mm-hmm. he feels like, oh, you didn't you didn't care enough to want to raise your voice. You didn't care enough to to, yep. to demonstrate anger and fight by throwing and yelling or hitting or whatever. When we can fight for this same relationship by going to get therapy, by talking more often, by being mindful of each other's love languages. You know, there's so many, that, that's fighting for it. That mm-hmm. other thing that you see or have experienced in your past, that's what keeps us unhealthy. Yep. Yeah. That's toxic. My my dad did that with my mom. He was like, she didn't fight for us, you know, because my mom was passive aggressive. She would just sit there while he yelled and screamed. And he hated that. He wanted her to fight and scream because that's what he was used to. And that meant love to him, you know, because he was unhealthy that way. And well, um, I, and I and I go back to the honesty piece. It's like if if you know, let's just for me, it's like is you know. I told him this. I said, bro, like you, you, you should have just told the truth though. Like we, mm-hmm. we didn't, we didn't have to do this. We didn't have to, we didn't, I didn't even want to get married. You know what I mean? So, really? you know, if, if I was, if there were some things that you didn't like and that didn't work for you, tell mm-hmm. the truth. Just be honest. People, everybody thinks they can change you though. They do. You know, I, I, oh man, I had this guy who, it drove him nuts because he would curse me. He would call me names. He would do all these things. And I would just say, okay, if that's how you feel, you know, I, that, that was my way to quote unquote fight. I don't like using that word. It's, it's a negative vibration. I, I ain't even trying to bring it into it. I'm like, if that's what you feel, you call me a liar. You call me a whore. You call me et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Okay. If that's how you feel, and then we should go our separate ways because I'm never going to tell you that that's true because it's not. I know who I am, right. and I'm right. not going to curse you. I'm not going to call you out your name. I'm right. going to be loving to you because that's who I am. I'm yeah. not going to be brought down to your level of hostility because right. you think that's love. Nope. Right. Not love. Not to me. Yeah. That's you know? it. That's mm-hmm. it right there. Mm-hmm. There it is. Well, all right, Mm -hmm. ladies, I'm going to, we're going to take a quick break. We're going to switch gears. There were a couple of topics I was going to touch on pertaining to Shirley Strawberry and her situation with her husband. Uh, I talk about that all the time. Same with Wendy Williams. Let's come back and talk about this shit going on with Diddy. All right. So uh, first, before we go to our break, let me just say in these YouTube streets, thank you so much. You said, V, you are so right. When Fonnie let them know who she was, I was locked in, loved it. I know I love every moment <laughs> of it, honey. I feel like I was living vicariously through her that day, okay? All right, so we'll come back in just one minute. If you guys would like to uh, contribute to the, actually, what I will say today, um, do both of you have cash apps by chance? AJ, you have cash apps? Uh, yeah. Yeah. And send them. Mm-hmm. If you want, yeah. I don't know if you guys know how to do this. You can change your names right there mm-hmm. on the screen. Okay. Um, you can edit it and you can change it to your Cash App name. All right. We'll be back cool. in, in a second, everyone. If uh, you want to contribute to this channel, you can also send a Cash App or PayPal or Super Chat. And here's the information right here. <laughs> do it okay so if you when you uh wave your mouse above your or around your box do you see like three oh. dots uh yeah let me I see hold on. let me do it for myself 
Uh, okay, let's see. Did it let you change it? Um, okay, send it. Okay. Yeah, I just pressed on oh, the, yeah, my yeah. name. Yeah. Got it. And you found it. Got it. Okay. All right, so let me do a little backstory here. These stuff. So, well, before we even do that, I want to play a little game. Okay. Uh, AJ knows this game because um, I made her play it the first time she came on. Um, I won't ask as many questions, but I'm going to ask two or three questions. And um, what I'm going to ask you both to do is to go uh, off camera. So just hit the clam camera button, turn it off. I'm going to ask you a question. And if your answer is yes, then you will turn your camera on. Tell us all about it, all right? Uh, if the answer is no, <laughs> then yeah, just keep the camera off, okay? Okay. Mm -hmm. But right, now? So, yep, go off camera now. Perfect, perfect. Okay. First question. Do you know or have you ever heard of a freak off? Have you ever heard of or know the term freak off? No, okay. Since it doesn't have hers on, okay. AJ, how do you know about this term freak off? What's a freak off? I mean, wait a minute. You didn't ask. So I'm, I'm just asking, asking, I I asking if you've never heard of the term. I didn't ask if you. Okay. Never, yeah. Okay. So, yes, I've heard of it. I My first time hearing of it was listening to, you know, hearing all the information about Diddy. Okay. All right. And wh what's your interpretation of a freak off then? Uh, orgy. That's, how That's I what I thought it was. Just a multiple yeah. people just doing freaky shit uh, yeah. in the same room, <laughs> yeah. you know? So I think that's cool. one form. I want to say it almost sounded too like there were times a freak off would take place where Cassie was concerned and, and it might just be her with another dude and he's just watching. Like Diddy was watching it go down. Yeah. But for the most part, I think it's what you just described. I think it's more like an orgy. That's how I picture it anyway. Okay. Uh, yeah. Well, more than two people in the room, shit gets freaky. <laughs> <laughs> I hear. I've heard. I've heard. I would think. I would think. You know, you had heard that. Allegedly. <laughs> Allegedly. <laughs> okay. All right. Okay. Well, go off camera. Go off okay. camera. All okay. right. Okay. Next question is. And Cinda, even though you didn't know the term at first, now that you know the term and everything, this you can still answer this question. Have you ever been invited to? I didn't say you attended. I said invited to a freak off. Oh! Ooh. <laughs> I didn't know that's what it was. I didn't know that's what it was. Okay. It, okay. It was actually a bachelor and bachelorette party. Okay. And that was wait, wait, what wait. Oh, it was a co ed bachelor bachelorette. Yes. Yeah. The, it. it was a couple getting married and they had their party together, but that's what it was. Okay. And yes. so how'd you find out what had happened when you got there? When I got there, I found out. My my cousin and I went. And um, at first, it was just normal, fun stuff. And then it got freaky. It just clothes started coming off. Drugs started being inhaled. And I looked at her and she looked at me and I'm like, you ready? She says, yes. And we go. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. wow. All right. Mm -hmm. Okay. Off camera. Off camera. Okay. Hey. Um last question. If a freak off <laughs> could change the trajectory of your career and your bank account, would you consider it? I didn't say you would do it, but would you consider a freak off? Okay. Okay. All right, both of you can come on camera now. 
We're clear. I was going to say it depends on who's who's okay. in who's at the freak off, but yeah, no, I'm good. Wait, what'd you say, AJ? I said I, said I was going to I was going to have fun with it and say what well, depends on who's invited, but no. I was invited to another one and again, I'm I'm so like naive. I've been so naive about so many things that it was odd the group of people that invited me to this thing. It was all women and all women I knew and respected. And I was invited to this trip, this girl's trip, you know, in the land of what happens here stays here. And I was going to go. I was going to go. But fortunately, I was warned. I was told what was coming for me. Um, they had plans for my ass and I was warned and I got out of it. I was like, Oh, they like me. They really like me. <laughs> and it was like I said, people in the business, females in the business that I'd been watching and knew and wanted to, you know, be friends with I always, that was my dream. I always wanted to have friends but i never freaking could the closest i came was hallie and you know her manager stopped that progress so i didn't and, and most of the time i was working with men uh, you know opposite men so i didn't really get to meet that many women in the business and so when this invite came i was like oh my gosh they're so cool i can't wait to meet them and mm -hmm. and then my little hopes were dashed when I found out what was really going on. So, yeah, mm. but no, I'm, I'm really good at saying no to anything that just doesn't jive with my spirit. And it's not religion. It's not, you know, judgment about other people's doings. It's just like, I, you know, no, I'm just not trying to do that. I'm not trying to do anything to further my career, but act my ass off. You know what right. I'm saying? And, and these days do a lot of extra stuff on social media, build my own marketing and do my own marketing and, and put myself out there, which is what you have to do. But I am not willing to go down on you. I'm not willing to sleep with that guy. So this guy can watch. I'm not willing to do all the things that are expected. Yeah. Often, you know, just, nah, that's okay. Yeah. Well, and the reason why I asked too about, would you consider it if it would change your, the direction of your career? Because it seems as if in some ways, like if I really think about it, Diddy has only made a couple of stars, if you ask me, like Mary J. Blige, obviously. Um, we we learned the biggie through him. But since that, and, and um, uh, Jodeci, right? Jodeci was on Bad Boy, I believe. What about Usher? Was he one of them? No. no Usher. Mm -mm. Really on LaFace, um, oh, I want to say either LaFace mm -hmm. or so so. I think it he was on LaFaces, but he did go to Diddy Flavor Camp. Which mm, that's right. That's right. We'll talk about a little bit of that in a second. But um, uh, what was I saying right before that? I don't think that I would have. I, I think that I probably. Oh. I don't. I I don't know if I've ever been invited. To be honest, I I, I could have been, but. Uh, I was too naive to to know that that I was, mm -hmm. and um, I was blessed enough to have been on the road so much in the '90s that I didn't really get invited to a lot of that stuff. But um, what I will say about that is, um, I don't really think that I was. I don't think I was. Ch I wasn't chosen. I wasn't one of. I wasn't the type that was chosen back then hmm. you know what i mean because why you're so pretty and talented why no, would you say, exactly. think that thank you but i don't think that i was i don't i think that pe uh um people were attracted to the other women that i used to hang out with okay. those other actresses like they loved jada and that look i, I got say. it I get you. See what I'm saying? Yep. So I was so my type wasn't like the popular, ooh, let's choose her to come go to this. And you know, and there were times where I would I felt uh dejected by that. But of course, now I'm grateful. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? So mm -hmm. 
Hmm. That's, that's sure. my comment about that. like, so like, I'm really glad that, you know, it's almost like God had like a hedge of protection <laughs> over yeah. me. Yeah, for sure. You know, in a sense. For sure. Because there were times I was just like, wow, they didn't choose me. Like, wow, they, ain't, they what, what's wrong? You know. Also, there's a perception over women that look like me, you know, that, that they're, that freakiness. And there, there's a perception and I, you know, I was asked and offered and all kind of to shoot as well. All the way, I was told this might be a good time to bring that up was the, the invitation from the Illuminati yesterday, you know, it's like. Oh yes, tell us about, well, wait, before you say that, before you tell mm -hmm. us about the Illuminati. Oh yeah, I forgot to tell the crowd about that. that Linda was invited to be a part of the Illuminati last night. But anyway, what I was going to say when you, okay, let's really, let's just put it out on the table. When mm -hmm. you say that people would have a wrong impression or a certain impression about people who look like you, Cinder, let's call it what it is. Mm -hmm. They think white folks is freaky and mm -hmm. you're biracial, so you got to be freaky too. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I I had this a lot of times in my career in certain <laughs> projects. It was like the you know it'd be me and another woman, and the other woman was brown, and I'm this, and I would be playing the sex symbol type of character, and she'd be the matronly, matriarchal, strong, beautiful soul sister, and and that would. That went across. That, that was in movies, but it was also not in movies. Like I did this movie once. I, I won't call out the name, but I was working with another with another actress who I really love and respect. And she's brown skin. And in it, there was the the wife, the good wife and mother and stuff. And then there was the. Um, the sex symbol, uh, rotten to the core, will open her legs for anything type. And, but the thing is in the movie, the character that was that sexual one was supposed to be an ex-slave. Mm -hmm. And I didn't understand. I was like, how, how do we have these roles? Why wouldn't they be switched? She looks more like she came from Africa than I do. But because of my looks, the way they perceive my looks, no, I had to be the sex one. I had to be the sexy one. I had to be the one that was, you know, making the husband turn away from his wife. And I was like, it was just so weird to me because we're both actresses. We both could have played either role and mm. been believable. But mm. their perception, and there were men for the most part, mm. Was that no? There's no way that that would ever happen. You know, she would never be the sexy one. Oh when I look God. back, when I look back on on certain experiences and certain uh, things like that, I think about. I wonder if they were just really sort of acting out their own personal fantasy mm -hmm. in the way that you know what I'm saying, like mm -hmm. the way that they. So because it because it kind of sounds that way, and then you know I've had experiences too where you know where I'd be cast in a certain way, and it's like ah. Uh, this doesn't make any sense, you know? And it's like, mm -hmm. okay, so this is your own personal little freak off that you have it in your head. I got it, you know? Mm -hmm. And in and, and the, <laughs> the negative way too, though, it's a negative way too. Cause like I have this friend, whew, she is freaking gorgeous. She is beautiful. Her body is perfect. She hasn't aged a freaking nothing, but she's very dark skin. and we were, we didn't, I don't think we ended up doing this movie, but they were talking to us to do this movie. And the guy who was fair skinned, it was, he was so nasty, mean about what I represented, you know, and, and she was the queen. She was the mother. She was the goddess. I was the whore. I was the, you know, that was, that was his perception of when us two together, wow. you know, and I know there's a, you know, there's a lot of wrong all around, but I have really dealt with always being sex over sexualized just because I'm light skin. And it's like, but I think you're right. I think it is their, 
their own fantasies. That's so funny it because is. I always complained about being under sexualized. Like no one mm -hmm. ever, like I would consider the brown skin sidekick mm -hmm. all the time. Exactly. You know? And I was like, mm -hmm. well, I can be sexy too. Mm -hmm. well, damn, you know, so yeah, you know, six in one hand, half a dozen in the other. Same, mm -hmm. same, same deal. Yeah. yeah. What? Yeah, there's that's why I say do your own stuff and don't wait for a man to do it. That's right. <laughs> that's know. right. So are we gonna talk uh, about Wendy Williams or not? No, I'm gonna skip over Wendy and I'm gonna skip over Shirley Strawberry, unless you want to say something. But hold well, on one second thing. before we even okay. Go. I just want to say before we I get too far behind in these um comments, first and foremost, thank you again, T Rain, for the yes. super chances. Lady V, I don't wow. use cash, so please split this gift between both oh, of our beautiful sisters. Thank, thank you. So you. Very much. Thank you, T. Rain. Nice. What a beautiful gift. Appreciate wow. you so much. Wow. Thank you. And nice. then uh, Michelle says, I am really enjoying this conversation. Well, good, good, thank good. You. Uh, thank let you. me say this real quick. One of the reasons why I even asked about, you know, if you were invited and you knew that it would change your career, would you? Or let me let me say something a little different too. From my understanding, it has it is believed, but hasn't been proven or verified just yet. But it is believed that both Cassie and Young Miami uh, were paid like somewhere between two hundred and fifty to five hundred thousand dollars per month. And I don't know how true that is, but they were paid monthly that salary so that they could just participate in these freak offs. Do well, you... what I will say, to, I, I, I just feel like all money ain't good money. It sure ain't. Mm -hmm. No. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And 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 there's no, there's I haven't really come up with a price that's worth my soul or my right. standards. I mean, and I and don't get me wrong, like I have had my fun. Don't get me wrong. I had mm -hmm. the 90s was cracking. <laughs> <laughs> You know, I've had my own, but I made my own personal choices based on, you know, what I wanted or whatever, but um, nothing is worth compromising, uh, you know, who I am. And, you know, I, I, I still, every choice I ever made, I've, I've always still been able to wake up and look at myself in the mirror mm -hmm. and I'm okay with that. And that means I, I lose out on $500,000. Oh, well, I'm mm -hmm. worth more than that anyway. You know, you can't give me mm -hmm. what I'm worth. So I, I know too many males and females, especially in the music business. It's worse to me. That's kind of why I didn't really fight really hard to do the music because it was so much of that. And Same. Same. It, yeah, yeah. And I was just like, nah, that's too much pressure. And I'd rather just go sing in nightclubs and make a few dollars here and there and and not have that. I, I I just I know so many males and females, and 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 not your typical cutie mm -hmm. pies like an usher or Justin Bieber, but regular looking dudes that are like super super talented musically being put in those positions where they have to choose. Uh, like well, I, I can tell the story, and a, a friend of mine told me um, about his son. He said his son. Um, he's new, fresh, doing really well, starting to build his career, you know, in, you know, getting lots of, of kudos, getting a lot of attention and ended up being invited to someone's house and goes in and they're waiting for him naked, you know, and they're like wanting to see him with the wife and doing blah, blah, blah. That stuff happens. It doesn't matter what you look like. They want you to pay you know, to play and, and, and they'll pay you to pay to play. And, um, and he was very confused because they were like, if you do this, then your career, which is already rising, will just, mm. and I don't even know what he did. You know, we didn't get that deep into it because I was like, that's like, you know, and he didn't want to tell me the, the answer one. But a lot of times the answer is okay because they want to make it so much. They want the money. They want the fame. I mean, in this in this thing from the quote unquote Illuminati yesterday, they were like, yeah, yeah they're like, if you join us, you know, you would be joining a, a, a 
a small group of heavy hitters that are very powerful in all aspects of life. And you would be wealthy beyond your imagining, and you would Seven, have this. You're going too far. You're going too far. Come back. Where were you when you got this invitation? Was it email, a phone call? At a it party? was. It was on uh, Instagram Messenger. They messaged me on Instagram, and I. This isn't the first time I've had this invitation. I've had it face to face. I, you know, I had some. And businessmen sit me down in a restaurant and make all these offers. But this one, this was freaking on Instagram. And the only reason why I could think is because they're trying to shut down the positive messaging that I got out there, you know, and it was, I was like, no, thank you. Are you sure I'm positive? I'm positive. How do you know you, did you have an idea? It might not have been. It oh, might okay. not have been. I don't, okay. I don't know, but. Okay. I wasn't going to like question it and say, prove to me that you are in. No, it's just no. Uh uh. If you're real or not, no. Not interested. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. I'm a light bringer. Not that, you know. Then I don't know. Maybe Illuminati's not bad. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I don't even know if they're called that. It's kind of stupid, you know. I don't even know if, yeah. if they're called that. But I, I'm not going to take any chances or, or, you know, dig. No, period. Right. Mm -hmm. so, well, I'm going to show you real quick because, uh, hold on, let me share my screen. I just want to show this lawsuit real quick and we won't go through all of it at all. Trust and believe. I just want to look at a couple of the highlights. First and foremost, um, this gentleman, uh oh, it's coming up. Okay. This gentleman, I'm gonna make it even bigger. Okay, so this gentleman, uh, who is actually the plaintiff in the case, is Rodney Jones. I guess he goes by Little Rod, and he was or is a music producer and musician and writer. Um, he is suing Sean Combs, which is Diddy. Uh, Justin Dior Combs, which is Diddy's son. Uh, Ethiopia, I do not know how to say her last name, but she was at one time the CEO of Motown. Lucian Charles Grange, who is or who is the head of uh, Universal Music Group. Christina Corum, uh, who is Diddy's chief of staff. Uh, Shalice Recording Studios, Love Records. <laughs> Motown Records, Universal Music Group, Combs Global Enterprises, and then there's John and Jane's Doe's 1 through 10 and ABC Corporation's 1 through 10. All right. So again, um, I was kind of going through this with um, my members the last couple of days, and this is like the second time I've seen or even heard of a lawsuit that on the paperwork, there's a trigger warning. Um, mm -hmm. The first time was when Cassie was up and I've heard other attorneys say they've never in their life heard of a trigger warning on court documents like this. So here's our second time seeing it once again by people dealing with Diddy. And then I'll just say, um, I'm trying to see a quick little overview of what the situation entails. Um, basically from September, 2022 to the date of this filing, defendants have consistently and purposefully availed themselves of the privilege of conducting activities within New York, thus invoking the benefits and protections of New York law. So that's kind of like gives us an idea of what, what they're, um, basing this on. And they're looking at basically, um, going after those parties as part of a RICO act, um, so it talks about how Rodney Jones, AKA Lil Rod is an American artist and music producer, lives in New York and in California. And the defendant is Sean Combs mainly. I'm gonna skip through that. Now they show, they have pictures included here, of this lawsuit. I just think it's interesting. Why they choose this picture for, for Diddy? He ain't even <laughs> looking at the camera. And, you know, so you could, he's still going to look creepy to me no matter what picture you choose. But why they choose this picture? Okay. <laughs> I, it's not lost. All right. He's auditioning to play Danny Glover. <laughs> <laughs> he, 
Shoot. Yeah, I guess he, he might be uh playing that part if he gets it from the cell, okay? Um it's a trip to know that it's, it's it's really interesting to hear about like how how involved his son is with all of this. You know, like I said, I've been I've been paying attention to all these things that have that have come out, all these allegations that have come out. And I just find it very uh disturbing how, you know, he's brought his son in into this all of these shenanigans. And I don't I don't know the relationship between them two, but I don't know. I just I find that to be sad. Um, and family um, business. True. I, 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 you know, I guess, I guess, I guess mm -hmm. so. Um, and, um, and, you know, all of this kind of coincides with what Cassie alleged as well. Absolutely. You know, everything sort of like lines up. It's confirmation. And, yeah. And, 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 and to be honest, like this has been an open secret for decades. Mm -hmm. Um, and so somebody, um, asked me my opinion about it. Uh, one of my friends who's not in the business, you know, he he was asking me uh, when the news came out about Keefe D and the orchestration of Tupac's murder and the whole thing, and they had named uh, Diddy be, being the orchestrator. And I told him, I said, I don't think he'll go to jail for that. I think he'll probably get more in trouble for something else. And this is before the whole Cassie thing came out. Mm -hmm. And so, um, so he hit me back and was like, oh my God, I, you were right. And I was like, yeah, because um, I have another opinion about why they're not going to like hold him accountable for Pac's murder or Biggie's murder. But, um, I, I think that this is, this is something that is more, not even more, but just as egregious because, um, you know, the, the trafficking and mm -hmm. the being with the minors and, you know, the drugs, and it, it's just so nefarious. Like it's so mm -hmm. deep that, mm -hmm. but I mean, no, but nobody, no insider is really shocked. You know, right. it's, it's just, that. it's very, it's, it's, it's just uh, crazy how it's finally all come out, but mm -hmm. nobody that I've known in the industry, I don't know, no, Cinder probably say the same, like mm -hmm. no one, none of us. No, mm -mm. not at all. And let me that's say why, this. That's why I didn't do it. Yeah. Let me say because, this. Because oh, when, you, when you, when you, when I saw all of the allegations and the actions and the, the con I was like, well, yeah, that's, you know, mm -hmm. that's exactly how it all goes, you know, especially mm -hmm. when you get in these higher positions. And I think that a lot of times when people are in that position of power, I think that they have that level, they have some type of protection over them where they feel kind of like free to do all this stuff. Oh yeah. You know what I mean? And I feel like maybe that's, I feel like this is what I, how I really feel. I feel like Pac's murder was his reward. Mm. Mm. And his reward. that's why he got Good. all of this. Because right after yeah. Pac died, like he became the guy. Yeah. You yeah. know, yeah. And, yeah. Uh, and 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 so it's it's really interesting. I'm just thinking about the timing of it all. And, uh, you know, him and Suge going back and forth with the East Coast, West Coast thing back in the day and stuff like it's all so nefarious and it's all so, uh, it, it feel, it feels like a big, huge, uh, show, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. even though I feel like and all that is true. I feel like it's all a big show. I think there's something bigger going on. Absolutely. This is it, more distractions, more distractions, but I, but I do believe that, that, that many things are shifting and mm -hmm. stuff is tumbling, you know, stuff is coming down. Mm -hmm. uh, not because of of people in power making it that way, but because of spirit making it that way. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. Well, I agree with that. And I was going to say something that you said, AJ, I think you're right. Maybe Pac was, the loss of Pac was his reward on some level because everybody made more money after the 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 passing of Tupac, but then it also made him even bigger once Biggie was gone because now he's not in competition with Biggie. He's now the successor. He's the best friend who is mourning the loss of Biggie. So uh and it's so unfair, right? That you yeah know, he was able to play that up. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Exactly. So and let me say this you mentioned earlier about it's funny how his son would be so involved in this. Um, and look, let me let me make this very clear. 
I don't think that you have to be biologically related to someone for that to be your father or your son, right? The, and I say that because I do believe that he is Diddy's father in that sense. But the rumor is he may not be Diddy's son biologically. And maybe it's you can um, you can be OK with your not so biological son being involved in this type of nastiness versus if he was. Well, and I would like for them to also investigate Kim Porter. Oh, we're going to talk about that too. That's I would, oh, that's it. definitely not just Kim Porter, but Kim Porter's um, ex fiance that they said unalived himself. That, oh, okay, that was that's what it means. that he jumped out of a two story window to his because he wanted to un, unalive himself. Who does that? So anyway, we'll get to that. Well, um, all I got to say is Wendy Williams is owed a big apology, honey, because Wendy been talking about this for the last 30 years. Yeah, that's and, true. So they, they vilified her and made her look like she was the devil and she was evil and all this. Now I feel like she's her, she, regardless of what people think about her, she did not lie um, about all the stuff that she talked about back in the day. And so I feel like, you know, the fact that she's in this position that she's in now I feel like that's unfortunate because she wasn't lying. Mm -hmm. you know, well, you know, when, so, we go back to, when we were talking about when Monique talking about, oh, I'm telling the truth. I'm telling the truth. I'm telling the truth. Well, she was telling the truth too, mm -hmm. but, but she got, but she had, she got penalized for it. And so I feel like she's, but how did she tell it though? You are right too. Huh? How did she tell it? It's kind of like Monique though, in the same way, it, the same way we said her delivery was bad. I feel like Wendy's delivery was bad. She was right about Bobby cheating on Whitney, but we didn't need to. Uh, she, I'm sure Whitney didn't appreciate her calling her man in the hotel while he with another woman and she's out at rehab. That, that interview has gone viral since then, as well as the interview where Whitney calls and cusses her out. That went viral too. So I feel like you're right. And I'm sorry that we never came back to the, the Wendy Williams piece because I know you wanted to hit on that. But Oh, no, that's all I wanted to share there. about it because I just felt like, you know, she. Mm, yeah, I mean, the delivery was a little bit harsh because I remember listening to her when she was just on the radio and I was like, Ooh. <laughs> like, wow. <laughs> but I mean, and she I was a shy on TV. But she, but she, yeah, she was way nicer on television. But I thought, <laughs> but I think that, uh, um, you know, Howard Stern was popular back then too. You know, as a mm -hmm. shock jock. Right. I think, you know, I think they just didn't want to hear it from a woman or something. Right. She was treated differently when she would bring things up because he was just as horrible as she was. So mm -hmm. whatever. I mean, God bless them all, man. I mean, that's how I feel. It's just, ugh, it's just all so nefarious. It's so crazy. Yeah. So I just want to show you guys real quickly who the defendants are. So that's the son that we don't know if it's his biological son, but nevertheless, it's his son. He's the defendant. Quote, quote unquote. Quote, unquote. Um, this is Lucian Grange, who was... Um, the head of Universal Music Group. This lady, this gorgeous beauty, uh, I can't say her last name, so I'm not gonna try to, I'm not gonna butcher it, but her first name is Ethiopia. She's Hab gorgeous. Hab, Hab, say it again, Haptamarian. It looks like Haptamarian. Yeah, I think so, Haptamarian, that might be right. Now she was the former CEO of Motown Records, but yesterday she was dismissed from this lawsuit. Oh, um, really? Interesting. Yeah, she was dismissed from the lawsuit, but uh, everyone else is still on him. Okay. Okay. This this is uh, Christina Corum. Uh, she is Diddy's current uh, chief of staff. As a matter of fact, if you all re recall seeing the video, chief of footage, staff. What is he? A politician? What is he? A senator? <laughs> I know, right? I know, right? He's That's the, funny. the president. He's the president. Yeah. Okay. Um, if you guys remember seeing the still shots or video of Diddy after the Cassie lawsuit came out and you saw him sitting out by the pool and there was this white woman and she looked like she just got out of the pool and she had on a, a 
Well, I think there's a picture of it in here. You'll see it. Well, anyway, that's her. She looks much better here, but she was, you know, that's his chief of staff. Okay. Okay. She is considered to be the Jocelyn. Is that her name? Jocelyn uh, Maxwell. Well, that's, yep. a, that's exactly that came to my mind too when I saw yep. her picture. That's they say so she, that is who she is. Who Jocelyn was to Epstein is who she is to Diddy. Mm. Um, then this is Shalice Studios. Um, so they're suing the su studios. They're suing Motown. They're suing uh, Love Records, which is Diddy's record company. Combs Global, Diddy's company. And then we get to Rodney Lil Rod Jones. And basically it gives us uh, the idea that he came from the church. He taught himself how to play several instruments. And when he had a chance to work for Diddy, that was everything for him. Like he thought this was going to really um, send him through the roof. Uh, Diddy actually contacted him to write songs for this last album he did called the Love Album. And yeah. oh boy, uh, wrote nine, wrote, wrote and produced nine songs for that album, but he was only paid $29,000 for his work. Nine months of work, nine oh, songs. He got $29,000. But get this, he only wanted 50000 but Diddy refused to give him the other twenty nine. okay? Uh, he's played with everybody from the Clark Sisters to Donald Lawrence, George Mesquire, all these people, right? So this is the summary of events. I'm going to read through them real quickly. I'm surprised uh, he's not suing, excuse me, though. I'm surprised he's not uh, suing, maybe he's included in the one to ten defendants, because I thought... Oh. Um, What's his face? Cuba Gooding Jr. was a part of that situation too. I think he well, Cuba is in the situation, is a part of the situation. He's definitely mentioned throughout here. And they even have pictures of, of the night that he felt Cuba, you know, tried him. They have a picture of him in here with Cuba's, you know, <laughs> arm around him and the way he's looking at him is child. Whew. And there's some other people that are not named, but they're very clearly described in the footnote. Which mm -hmm. kind of threw me, anyway, it kind of threw me off. But let me just say this real quickly. And I know, Cinda, it's almost time for your bedtime. I'm, I'm going to try. Okay? I'm going to try to get this. <laughs> too. Mine too. <laughs> I know, right? Mine too. Okay. From September 22 to November 23. So we're only talking about a year and a couple of months, which is interesting because Kathy's stuff was over a 10 or 11 year period, about a 10 year period of time and was a few years ago. Whereas this is very recent, right? Mm -hmm. uh, so he was, you know, residing in both New York and California um, that Combs asked him and witnessed his, his abilities and asked him to come and be a producer on the Love album. Um... He said, Mr. Combs um, would provide on a regular basis laced alcohol, alcohol beverages to minors and sex workers at his homes in California, New York, and in the Virgin Islands and Florida. And that KK or the, 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 um, the chief of staff, she would instruct her staff to retrieve drugs and uh, she can then provide it to Mr. Combs upon consumption uh in here it talks about how all of the staff the housekeepers the sh whoever worked in there they were to walk around with a uh, fanny packs or some kind of pouch so that drugs could always be readily available to him and to his guests okay um and he would have oh so here's the other thing let me read this part i'm just gonna read let me read these few points. So it says, Mr. Jones um, has secured irrefutable evidence. And that irrefutable evidence includes video and audio and uh, photographed footage, okay, of this stuff. Um, the acquisition, use, and distribution of ecstasy, cocaine, GHB, ketamine, marijuana, and mushrooms the displaying and distribution of unregistered illegal firearms. Um, wow. I talked about him uh, lacing beverages. Mr. Combs, chief of staff, um, I just mentioned that she would advise the, the staff to 
get the drugs and have it handy. Uh, Christian Combs was drugging and assaulting. I can't say certain words too many times. Um, was assaulting a woman. Uh, Mr. Combs detailing how he planned to leverage his relationship with um, T.D. Jakes to soften the impact on his public image um, in lieu of the Cassie lawsuit. Young Miami's cousin and or assistant assaulting Mr. Jones in, in a uh, sexual nature. Actor Cuba Gooding Jr. sexually harassing and assaulting Mr. Jones. And then get this, a rapper, and they've redacted his name from here, a rapper on Mr. Combs's yacht consorting with underage girls, sex workers, and then an R&B singer whose name was redacted in Mr. Jones, uh, I'm sorry, Mr. Combs's Los Angeles home consorting with underage girls and sex workers. Now I'm not going go mm. to go into anything else, but let's just be very clear. Uh, the the footnote describes the the rapper as a Philadelphia rapper who dated Nicki Minaj, Meek Mill, and the R and B singer is a Grammy award winning R and B singer who had trouble with the law with law enforcement after assaulting a Bajan billionaire. Are they trying to say that's Chris Brown? Yes. Interesting. Then there's another mention of another R&B singer at some point through here um, that basically this R&B singer, Diddy specifically to, okay. Well, let me say this about the other R&B singer. The other R&B singer, Diddy, told this guy Rodney, like, look, if you just let me have sex with you, I've done this with others. Others have let me. And the other R&B singer he names is somebody who, um, someone who performed recently, this is the, the footnote, performed at the Super Bowl and had a successful Las Vegas residency. Oh, wow. Mm. Damn. Dang, Trump. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all want to say his name? Just say the name. Shoot. Wow. Usher. Usher. Wow. Mm -hmm. So he's listed in here too. Now, uh, this man describes uh, being witnessed, well, not, well, witnessed to a man basically being uh, shot by Diddy. Now, he didn't see the shot go off, but let me just describe this one little piece. Because I know mama about to go to bed. Let me say this word real quick. <laughs> oh, wait a minute. I just wanted to. You're going to have to detox after this, girl. I know. Where's um, my Epsom salt? You're going to have to sage after mm -hmm. this. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Wait, oh. okay. Sad. Let me just read what happened at this club. Okay. Mm -hmm. Oh, so he's talking about the, the night that he shot up the club and blamed Shine for it? No, this is recent, two years oh. ago. That's what's okay. crazy. So he has a habit to get away with that shit like he yeah. did back then. And here it goes. But see, that's the thing. When you are so cocky, because people give you this sauce, uh, this uh, false sense of, you know, power, that you really don't have because obviously these people will take you down whenever they freaking feel like it. Um, but anyway, let me just say this. So it says that they were at this particular camp. Okay. Let me, let, let's go up just a little bit. Okay. This is the shooting at Shalice recording studio. This was in September, 2022. Oh yeah. I heard about that. And he so it says, Mr. Holmes held it. Huh? He was shot what up in the said? bathroom or something. Yes. So it says Mr. Combs held a writer's producer's camp at Shalice recording studio and present at the camp were Mr. Combs, his son and Justin, the son's friend named G. Mr. G is a 30 year old tall African-American male. In addition to these individuals, other musicians were present at the camp. 
This writer has spoken to several musicians who attended the camp. And one evening during this camp, Mr. Combs, Jay Combs, the son, and G, the friend, were in a heated conversation. That conversation was moved out of the studio and into a restroom adjacent to where Mr. Jones was sitting. So Mr. Jones was approximately two feet away from the bathroom when gunshots rang out. Mr. Jones recalls hearing multiple gunshots. Uh, he immediately went into a state of shock and feared that he too would be shot. Uh, and after the shooting ended, a crowd gathered around the, the restroom. Uh, when, when the door finally opened, Mr. Combs and Justin Combs exited the bathroom. G was on the floor lying in, in fetal position, holding his stomach and bleeding out of his leg and hip. Everyone stood around upon G, uh, looking upon G, and frustrated by the lack of aid to G, Mr. Jones dropped everything, ran to G, and immediately uh, began placing pressure on his gunshot wounds to his, his stomach. Uh, as he was applying pressure on his stomach, uh, Mr. Jones realized that G was gushing blood from another area from his leg or hip. He decided to lift G and place him on the toilet. Um, and told someone else to call the ambulance. Uh, Mr. Jones lifted G, brought him to the ambulance, to the front, to the studio's front. And at that time, Mr. Combs and Justin disappeared to another part of the studio. But Mr. Combs gave strict instructions to inform the police that he had nothing to do with the shooting. He also forced Mr. Jones to lie to the police by telling them that G was shot standing outside the studio by a drive-by assailant. Now, mm. the reason why um, I kind of want to show this, this is proof of what happened in the bathroom. Mm. Blood on the floor, just just crazy. And clearly um, they were saying G was not outside, was not shot outside um, as Mr. Combs instructed his team to report to law enforcement. And the other thing that they kind of talk about is the fact that Oh, oh, I wanted to show a couple pictures. Um, the fact that uh, the reason why nobody says anything is because Diddy made it very clear that he has, you know, cops on his payroll. He's very mm -hmm. highly connected to them. And he has a dude that works with him in particular that makes problems go away. And his last name is Muhammad, which, you know, leads us to believe that he's, you know, part of the nation of Islam or at least once was. And he, this guy is very respected and has people uh, on his, that he's connected with in law enforcement in California and New York. Then this is other pictures that he, he um, the guy provided of Stevie J, supposedly, allegedly having sex with a white boy. Um, this was because this young man, Rod Jones, was very, um, he admired Stevie J and the work Stevie J had done as a producer with Bad Boy, wanted to be like him, wanted to work with him. And so did he use this as an example? Well, see, Stevie J does it. I've had sex with Stevie J and Usher and all these people. And you should let me do it too. You see how that changed their life kind of thing. So these are snapshots from a video that he has actual proof of and has for evidence. That's Stevie J, J again, another shot. And then some more stuff going on. Um, this is uh, the party, some some other situation where, oh, this was Thanksgiving Day when he was sexually harassed by young Miami's cousin, this girl here in this hat, and that's young Miami. And then I want to show y'all the pictures of Cuba Gooding Jr., though. Oh, this is one night he woke up and he had sex workers in his bed. He had been drugged by Diddy, he felt, and he woke up and he was in the bed one time with sex worker Diddy and somebody, I guess it was four people in the bed. And then another time it happened again. Okay. And then these are girls he would recruit. I just want to see, where is the, um, okay. This is Diddy with some underage girls in these pictures. And I just want to show, oh, here's Cuba Gooding Jr. talking to Diddy. Here, this is a party that they had on one of Diddy's yachts. 
or on a on a yacht rather. And this is Cuba with his arm around. Um, this is Rod Jones. This is the same day. And he says Cuba um, fondled his genitalia and his anus or tried to. And he had to peel him off. So I say all that to say. What you think about this, y'all? Not a surprise. No surprise. It's just, you know, like I said, the towers are crumbling. I, so I'm the one yeah. that's fascinated with this bullshit. Mm -hmm. Well, no, I mean, it's I've been hearing a lot about that. And so it's it's just um well, it's 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 every day. Yeah, I mean it's it's ugh, no one is shocked. No, you know, no. I, I I was really surprised uh, to hear Cuba's name come up, though, and to see his involvement. I will say that, but um, it's all so crazy, but it all makes sense. Like when I look back, when I you know when I think back on all the years of things that I've heard, it's like okay, I I can see how why and the what of it all you know and so it's un it, i you know i i really hope that justice is served but i wouldn't be surprised if it ends up being like another epstein type of situation not saying that he'll go to jail and you know and be off but um just you know in terms of like we'll never really know all the details every no, single thing it's, it's so much worse than what we know yeah yeah mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's so much it really worse. And, you know, so this but I, this, this is just this one guy's experience. You know, who knows? Like, if everybody came out with their versions of of their experience, I mean, good lord, we it, it, it was, it's never ending. You know, desensitized. But but I want to say this before I say good night. Um, yes, while all these things are happening, I think people generalize about the nature of entertainment of there are far more aj saunders and Santa williams than there are of cuba gooding and p diddy far 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 more that are now doing things the the, the business has not closed down i mean it has opened up we're, we're able to do our own pro programming. There's so much need. And there are people that are really doing wonderful work in music, in, in acting, in the arts that has nothing to do with that stuff. Mm -hmm. That mm -hmm. stuff really happens, but there are also at the same time so many people doing wonderful things that are beautiful just like you um so don't hate all of us with the same brush you know i just i just want that to be clear mm -hmm. that just gave me chills i ain't gonna even lie that just really that just washed all over me and i appreciate you saying that because i tell people that all the time just because you don't see me doesn't mean i'm not working you know, mm -hmm. and uh, and and we're able to be successful in our own, you know, in our own world and our own right, and you know, and be able to on live your own terms. We're on our own terms, and we're living life to the fullest, and we're really thriving, and life is good, and we're happy and joyful, and you know, and we're not tied into a lot of that 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 junk, that foolishness, and so. And it's just like how the world works. I mean, like there's good and there's bad. And then there's, you know, there's there's an underworld underbelly. And then there's these people yeah. who are light bearers, you know. So yeah. um, so that's that's true. I mean, because there has to be balance, right? Mm -hmm. So the universe works with balance. And so mm -hmm. where there is that, there is also us. Mm -hmm. You know, exactly. and even yeah. though that the uses don't get the likes and don't get the whole all the follows and stuff and thank god i'm not in it for that exactly i don't you even look I mean? at it 
And yeah. so I don't I don't uh, place my value on how many clicks I get or how many likes, how many hearts I get on Instagram. Like if I if I really depended on that, I would literally my self esteem would be uh, in the ba- in the basement. But that's not where my self worth lies. And so um, that's I why say, I, people you know people are like, well, you should be bigger, you should be this. And I was like, I know how to be, become bigger. Take off my clothes. I. I I'd, I'd go viral. I, uh, you know, I know how to go viral, but viruses kill. I'm not trying mm. to go viral unless it's with some light to shift some minds and some hearts. So yeah. in the meantime, I'll just, I'll just shift my one person here, my 50 people there. And, and, you know, the people, you know, every time we go on a different platform where we're teaching and sharing and growing and evolving, to me, that's the long game. That's yeah, the and that's why we're well, still I here. Mm-hmm. That's right. You know, that's, right. that's why we're still here. So, and we're not going anywhere until we exactly. say so. Exactly. <laughs> well, let mm-hmm. me say this before Cindy runs out of here, real quick. Mm-hmm. I want to say, T. Rain said, "Thank you, ladies, for Thank your you. time and for being so down to earth." Uh, good night, everyone. Sweet rest and beautiful blessings. So, uh, you, Linda, before you go, I'm gonna let mm-hmm. you go first. Since you, before you go, though, will you tell mm-hmm. us where we can find you, where you want them to come check you out, and what else you got going mm-hmm. on? Yeah, sure. Um, you know, I do my daily uh, or my my meditation walks and my um, showbiz sin segments, and sometimes I started a new one called Sin Story. Uh, uh, my some of my stories spread out over several um, things, but you can find all that on TikTok under Cinda Williams at 615 or at Cinda Will on Instagram, at Cinda Williams on Facebook and Cinda Will on Facebook and all those things. I don't do much more than that, but, and if you want to hire me, you can find me on LinkedIn, Cinda Williams. Um, because I'm looking at you. I'm looking up, I'm following you right now. Okay. I'm going to follow you back. Yay! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so y'all please. already follow each other on Facebook. I noticed that. Mm-hmm. So that was mm-hmm. Yeah. All so, right. Well, let me ask thank you, AJ. You. Can you check it with me for fifteen more minutes? Let's see if the people have questions you can answer. You can okay. Do that. Okay. Yeah. I'm sorry. Yes. I'm. I'm. I haven't eaten I and, I, and I shouldn't eat this late. But I'm tired. Love you guys so much. I hope we do this yeah. again. And and yeah. congratulations, yeah. AJ, on all you're doing. You're wonderful. And V, yeah. you, you're my girl. You know I love you. So you guys you. be blessed. I'm gonna put it out there. I want to work with you one day. So absolutely, freaking uh-huh. absolutely. Let's make it happen, honey. Let's make I it happen. Okay. I'm, 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 on the inside, I've been fangirling the whole time. So oh please. <laughs> There ain't nothing to fangirl about. We we sisters, <laughs> so we're gonna make it happen. Okay. All right, I love you guys. I'll love see you, you next Why? time. Bye bye. Bye. Oh, nice, nice, nice. Okay, so look, I'm giving energy, you look. Man. I talked to energy. Her energy, her energy was so beautiful. Ah, uh, she, she's anyway. very, very, very sweet, kind, beautiful inside and out. She really is. Yeah, I felt she, all that. <laughs> Okay. All right, y'all. Uh, AJ is, is here. And yeah, 10 more minutes. Y'all got 10 minutes. In, in fact, I think what I will do, I will even drop the link. So if you guys want to come up and ask her a question, I'll give you like two minutes to ask a question. Okay. If you're not scared. Uh-oh. You know, people under a lot of pressure. Uh, Joe is in the back. All right. Hello. Hi, Joe. How are you? Hello. 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 Hey, hey. Hi. Long time no see. How you doing, what a, AJ? How oh you my doing god, what a great on? surprise. How are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm great. So nice to meet you, V. So Hi, what are you doing right now, friend. Joe? You look like you backstage somewhere. Uh I'm actually at at uh my acting coach's studio where I where I have my um open mic. I have an open mic here, so uh, the last one is gone. So I, I remember you were on stream. I was like, this is like old times. We we did this all during the pandemic, V. That's we all, did. That's we all did. we did. Wow. <laughs> <kept us> <laughs> Good to so see y'all. The, what, 
So you gonna do you, you got an open mic that you do you host it? Yes. It's like one of those slotted mics where you go online, sign up for a slot, and then you show up and do your five or ten minutes and then and then you go do another mic. It's early enough to where you can get this one in early and then go to do one of the other mics at the club. Yeah. That's dope. Wow. So now are you still on the road with uh Tony? I, I am. We we go to Toledo, Ohio to the funny bone. This weekend, I'm catching a red eye tomorrow. Where? Yep. Yeah, tomorrow. Really? Catch a red eye. I'm in Ohio. Tomorrow. You better You're go see Ohio? them, girl. Go see them. Anybody in Ohio, go yes. see them. Hey, so did you see me post about Brian Simpson? I I didn't. I didn't see. Yeah. What, what did you say? Have you heard of him? Is that uh, Bart Simpson's long lost brother? I don't know who that is. <laughs> no, he's a comedian that has okay. he just he just that he just dropped a Netflix special last week. Okay. And um one of my friends brought him to my attention and uh, I'd never seen him before. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. I will tell you you know how I'm a fan of a certain type of comedy, right? Like I'm I'm a yeah. fan of yours, Tony Rock, yeah. you know, I love I love a very specific uh, type of comedian, and let me yeah. tell and you know how I am. So I watched this dude from start to finish, laughed the whole time. Like genuinely, okay. I felt like just a comedy fan. He's so good, well crafted bits, impeccable timing, um, great perspective. I mean, you would enjoy. He's dope. He's dope. I'll check it out. I'll yeah, check it he's out. really good. Yeah. So anyway, I was just wondering if you've seen him or not. But it's so good to see you, bro. Yeah, yeah. Likewise. Likewise. Joe, I, I, know, I have I a question you. for you. Yeah, sure. So tell me um, something that you remember AJ in or something about AJ that you that sits in your memory as being one of your favorite things to see her in or do. I uh, would definitely stand up the last time we were together uh in the same place was i think it was at the stand up comedy club the one in uh, bellflower bellflower so yeah, that was, was, that was really so. good to see cuz it had been a long time since um i'd seen you one and then and then seen you perform and, and they they loved you it was a, it was a great show so definitely that aj and i met years ago in dallas texas and that's where i started but uh she happened to be living in, in, in Dallas at that time. And um, she would come out to the shows and we had had a great, a great rapport and great chemistry. And then um, it was, it, it was cool seeing you again. You know what's funny? Let me tell you something about Joe yeah. though. He's very humble. V. So when I first saw him, he was with a few other comedians that were up and coming back, back then. It was like 2001 ish. Yeah, yeah, and yeah, um, he was the one that stood out. I was like, "This one's—he's got the goods. He's got it." <laughs> yeah, know. you knew it right off. Yeah, and, off, now, right and now he's on the road with Tony Rock, killing yeah. it, killing yeah, yeah. it. We, Seriously, we do all right. <laughs> yeah, y'all yeah, are doing the damn thing. It, so. We started a a, a podcast uh, live from the green room on YouTube. So I think we're on oh, nice. episode seventeen now. I think I'll look, I'll look you so, guys up live from the green room. Yeah, okay. So it, it's it's been going pretty good. We're we're we we have a nice flow, and we're just trying to evolve and get to that point where you know we we, we gain some traction and you know just build the platform. You know, you will, but, you will. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it's so been real fun. Yeah, I want to. One day, I'd like for you guys to, if you ever want to add a woman to the tour. Oh, that's that's coming. We were talking about that because I mean, you know, when you're doing clubs and you don't have even headliners, they they can't do what they want to do all the time, and it can't be right. as big as they want it to be. There's certain things. Well, listen, I'm so busy. I'm so busy doing the only ship streets, man. Oh, it's, really? Yeah, yeah, I'm okay. doing the ships, and it's been really great. Like the, the material has evolved tremendously since the last time you saw me. So, yeah, yeah we'll talk. It's been really, really great. Um, the next time I go out, uh, if I go out next month, 
and I fly mm -hmm. to Spain. So I'm sailing from Spain all the way throughout the Mediterranean. Okay. What now? What ship line are you, are you on? Right now, I'm on Carnival. Okay, Carnival. Okay. Yeah, right. the fun ship. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, with the big with the big red spout. Uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I, I always thought it looked like a plane. You know the 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 the, the tail on the, the fin on the plane. Yeah, on it the does. Back of the plane, but it's like, is it, was this gonna fly off or something? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. So it's been fun. I mean, it's been really great. And so, I mean, it's it's really you do we do five shows per cruise, mm -hmm. and uh, you know, it really forces uh and challenges me to you know be creative, and you know, it, each show has to be different you know, mm -hmm. each 30 minute spots. And I'm telling mm -hmm. you, I mean, I'm just banging them out and getting those reps in good. and um, getting to my good, goal, good. you know? So, so V, are, you said what part of uh, Ohio are you in? I'm in Columbus. So Toledo is two and a half hours away, but. Oh, you know, okay. I'll Girl trip. Yeah. Well, yeah. I was going to say, yeah, I will yeah. travel. If you want to make that drive. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Uh, so are you that, coming that this handle, way? Right? Say that again. Do you think you'd be in Columbus or Cincinnati or? You know, I other? know Columbus this year, we we have not done Columbus yet, but that's definitely one of the clubs that we do. We do all of them, Dayton, Columbus, Toledo, yeah. um, Cincy, and did I say Dayton? Yeah. So we do yeah. all of them. So it's 2024. I just don't. I don't know where that falls on the calendar. I don't know where that okay. falls falls on the calendar, but yeah, um, Columbus. Well, I will look be. it up. Yeah, I will look it up. I, do you follow? Do you follow? Do you follow him on Insta? Absolutely, I sure can. As a matter of fact, could you tell us how to follow you? Is I'm guessing it's right there. That that's it Should right there. Go. That Joe Feezy on everything I love. That's on uh, Facebook Feezy. and YouTube. Um, Instagram. Yep, that's it. That's it. Yeah, you would really. Yeah. You're gonna have a great time if you go see them. I'm telling you, they are amazing. It's it's uh. <laughs> Y'all have a lot of damn fun. A little bit too it's, much fun. <laughs> yeah, it's it's. You it's know, when another comedian watches other comics, you know how how difficult it can be to sit through watching mm -hmm. people, right? But it's just, but. For me to watch you guys, it was just I, I was a fan. Like I'm a I'm a student of the game still. And right. it's just I'm just watching y'all like, damn, I wanna I wanna you join that party. Long you Beach, know what I mean? <laughs> was it Long Beach? Well, no, it wasn't Long Beach. It was no, uh, San Diego. It was San, San Diego. Diego. Yeah. See, mm -hmm. you are see, she came on a night where we we're doing antics and it was every show is different. I mean, we have virtually the same material, but we have it's it's always a situation <laughs> in the crowd. It's always it is always a situation. So that's you, what makes you got it a fun. Good show. Interesting. Good exactly. Exactly. Yeah, you guys were great. It was fun. This was way back when we had, everything had just opened up. It was Juneteenth weekend. Everybody was happy to be outside. Yeah. Oh right. Yeah. And it was yes. it felt like New Orleans down there. It was crazy. Yeah. And the gas lamps. So where are you from originally? I uh, grew up in Oklahoma City. Um, oh, wow. I'm from all over, but I was born in California, in Oakland. But I, you know, we set a family set down roots in Oklahoma City, and then from okay. there, after uh, college, um, University of Oklahoma, I moved down to Dallas, and that's where I started doing stand up. Started doing oh, stand up wow. out there, and I've been in Los Angeles since 2006. 2006. I don't hear any bit of a southern accent or anything. So how long the were first you person who's in ever said that. before you would you say? You're the first person who's ever said that to me. Really? That you don't hear an don't accent. Hear you don't hear yeah, oh, you don't hear no. Oakland. No, I don't hear Oklahoma. You're the Did first you say person Oklahoma? Who said that. Yeah, Oklahoma. Wow. Okay. <laughs> people say, where are you? Okay. Where are you? You got a southern draw. I'm like, no, I'm not. I don't, I don't know what people hear. That. <laughs> they say that about me. But see, I was funny. raised by two people from the south. People think I'm from New York. 
Wow. I'm like, really? I don't sound like, yeah. no, I, don't, I don't sound nowhere near like I'm from New York or East Coast. Are you from mm-hmm. the East Coast? No, I am not. I'm a Texas. But you don't well, sound like you're from Texas. I don't? No. <laughs> oh, okay. No. I don't think you Texas like- is one of those cities where there's a, a, a Texas accent necessarily. It's either you're from the South or you're from Chicago or you're from New York and like, and you can tell they're from the East coast somewhere from, from Baltimore or somewhere. I don't think Texas has that accent stigma. Like, you can, <laughs> Oh, he must be from Texas. No, but you know, what's funny. Like, so when I'm on the ship, a lot of times I see, I meet a lot of people from all over actually, but when I get around Southern people, I do get into that, that's that, that's that thing where we all sounds like we're singing a song when we talk, yeah. you know what I mean? <laughs> So it like does come like out a, like yeah, a sound like Reba McIntyre. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's like, hey, how are like it, it? It just it just comes out like you know when I hear them. <laughs> like I heard one guy say, um, he said something that was so, and I was like, oh Lord, what part of the South is he from? Because I was cause I asked him. <laughs> He was wearing like a trucker hat, and he had like the whole like Larry the Cable guy outfit on. Right. And um, and I was like, "Sir, no disrespect, but you look like you got an F one fifty parked right out front of your your yard, and it's parked <laughs> on the grass." You, you know what it is? It's I think there's a difference between like a city type accent and a country accent. Sure. Like you know, a country sure. accent. I might sound a little country, but it's not a southern accent. Maybe oh, okay. a little country, but I yeah, I, I, okay. I never, I never subscribe to that. People hear different stuff all the time. Yeah, did you understand? People what tell I me said? all the time that I sound like I'm from the south, but the truth is, I mean, I get why that is. Both of my parents were from the south. I spent about six years in Atlanta, and I used to spend all my summers in Georgia. But I was never allowed to speak or sound as if I had a Southern accent in my home. My mother would stop me. So as I got older, when I thought I was being sassy or something, you might hear that Southern draw, I guess. But yeah, I wasn't Mm. allowed to sound like that. So now that I'm grown, I sound the way I sound, damn it. So it is what it is. There you go. (laughs) you, you, You heard what I said, right? You understood it. It is English. If you didn't understand it, you know. Well, actually, now that I've met a few um, Caribbean and African people, they have they have brought to my attention that I don't speak English. I speak American. Mm. I said, well, you understand American, don't you? (laughs) Right. Exactly. Well, then speak American. So what do you think about the Diddy situation since we were just finished talking about that? Yes, Jeff Feasy. Uh, two things. You been to a freak okay. off? Have you been to a freak off? You say freak Nick or freak off? What did you say? Freak off. I've been to freak Nick, but have you been to a freak off? <laughs> uh, n- no. <laughs> oh. No, I no, I, no, no, ma'am. <laughs> I have not been. Uh, two things. Have you, about- have you been invited to a freak off? Yes, but I didn't get it. I didn't get the invitation until it was already over. (laughs) But I I wasn't gonna go anyway. You got in. You got invited to the freak over. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, freak over. (laughs) Tell me the highlights. Freak done. Right. (laughs) Okay, so what are your two things? The the two things is that I I just heard that P Diddy's all three of his residences got raided at the same time. Yeah, what's the third one? I, 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 yeah, I just heard that. Like, oh, they raided his house. L.A., New York, and Miami. So, like, New like York all too. at the same time, like an orchestrated hit. Go to all his houses, like you know, like now. Hell go, yeah, you know. yeah, orchestrated. So I, I heard about. Because think like, about it this way: if they're if he's throwing, if they're getting into one house and he's at another one, he's gonna be fast to, you know, throw some shit out or something if there's stuff there. So yeah, so, but the lawsuit, but the but the but the guy's lawyer has has implemented into the 
documents and the court documents that he that Diddy is not allowed to destroy any evidence. No video, no phone information, mm -hmm. no computers that like like there is no, you know, you're not gonna he wasn't allowed to do that. And then my question though is how did he know to be away from home from all three homes? Perhaps look here's what I was oh okay. go ahead. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Oh, I was just I was just saying to have a uh, that type of coordination, you you don't you get you stalk the guy or whatever it is you do you do surveillance on the person and you get some sort of a pattern. You have people that know when he's out and ready to ready to go, and, and then you have the people ready to go. I can't imagine they just did it on a whim. We're going on this day without having some sort of a you know, a recon or something like that. But my point just in looking at it off of this was now what the hell is P. That? Diddy is getting the treatment. I want to show that? you something. That's Mr. Muhammad. That? I'm going to tell you what his job is. Go well, ahead. That's the bodyguard. Say what? I don't know if he's a bodyguard. He's something. But... He's fine. Say something, I'll, I'll tell y'all. Thank you. What were you saying, Lord, Joe? Oh, what I was saying was <laughs> now P. Diddy is getting the treatment, the, the, the treatment. And people are speculating as to why. Mm. So it said you can, whatever comes out on the social media, you can dismiss it. The fact is, is that that man has offended them people. And now they press the button on him and he's getting the, the treatment. And it's the perfect storm for them to do one thing, in my opinion, and one thing only. To pull your mind away from people like um, uh, Quiet on the Set. um mm. uh, What's up? There's another guy. There's another name that that's floating around up there in controversy. Dan Him, but there's that's the the Nickelodeon guy. Yeah. But there's another. There was another name. I can't think of the name right now. There's there's in some that, other in that same then doing the same stuff. Yeah, this the same debaucherous nature from them people. I said, look, P Diddy gets to carry the heavy load. And now it's taking your eyeballs off of the, off of the, the proverbial ball. No oh, pun okay. intended. <laughs> oh, so that yeah. he's getting yeah. the treatment. He is a he has offended his de detractors for the last time. They fatted up the calf. It's now to start hitting the pinata and start to take some of his resources, his money, his wealth, and transfer it back into uh, the hands from whence it came. That's mm. my Back into the hands of the paymasters. Yes. The, 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 the paymasters want, the, want their money back. Mm. Uh, that, well, that's, say, go ahead. I was just going to say, the reason why I brought this guy up was because mm. I want to say, one of you said, how did they know to come on whatever day or what have you, I would think that a person as rich as Diddy and as powerful as he is and has been, I should say, a person who is so connected with law enforcement to the point where you can get away, allegedly, that you can allegedly get away with unalivings and druggings and just and when we say unalivings, we're not just talking about the Tupac story or even the Biggie story or the just the Kim Porter story or her former um, uh, uh, fiance yeah. or the fact that I'll be sure is saying once again, without saying that he believes that Diddy is responsible for him going to, into that coma. And the fact that the stories around Jamie, Jamie saying that he felt uh, that he had been um, gang stalked. Is that what he said? Gang stalked? Gang stalked. Well, not gang stalked. He said that there were people around him that were 
he felt like there was something going on. Someone had him. betrayed him. And, yeah. and he was someone who used to go to. They say he's been to freak offs, but he would talk about how he's been to the white parties and that there were crazy things going on at the parties. So I say all that to say uh, this guy here is someone who can obviously make that happen. Now, this is the man. Oh, sorry. Let me come back. Let me make this a little smaller so we can all see it. So you, I want y'all to hear what this guy's alleged job was for Diddy. Um, Mr. Combs instructs, this guy's name is Fahim Muhammad. Mr. Combs instructs his staff to always contact Mr. Muhammad if they are ever pulled over by the police in Miami or California. Upon information and belief, Mr. Muhammad spoke with the LAPD after G was shot at at the at the studio and the LAPD was in the studio and witnessed the blood in the restroom. And they went with the bogus claim that the shooting of G occurred outside the studio. This was all thanks to Mr. Muhammad's connections with within law enforcement. Mr. Jones had no reason to disbelieve Mr. Combs as he had seen firsthand the shooting of G and the subsequent silence of the LAPD and the media that Mr. Combs indeed had the power to harm him. LAPD spent hours in the studio after the shooting of G, yet there were no arrests and Mr. Jones witnessed the LAPD in the, in the restroom, pictured above, and yet no arrests were made. And the morning after the shooting, Mr. Jones and several others arrived at the studio and G's blood was still on the floor of the, of the restroom and Mr. Combs hired someone to clean it up. And the part I didn't read was where he says that, um, he said, Mr. Combs consistently made it clear um, that he has immense power in the music industry and with law enforcement. Mr. Combs made it clear that his head, it was his head of security, as you mentioned, uh, head of security, Fahim Muhammad, had the power to make people and problems disappear. Hmm. Well, um, wow. if that's what it says, he said, uh, <laughs> <laughs> that, you know, I, you know, the best way to build a case against someone when, and I'm not, I don't know the case, but the best way to build a case against someone who shouldn't have a case built against them is, mm -hmm. is to cause confusion with the facts. And I'm reading it. I, I have to go by what it says. Um, other people who weren't there uh, have to go by what it says, or people will go by what it says. And mm. what the, and the G person is that that's someone who got killed. Well, we don't know if he's he's gone or not. We don't know. It doesn't I'm sound alive. like he's dead. Uh, he was he was ended. That's okay. It doesn't um, sound like he is because I don't hear that anywhere in the lawsuit that I've seen so far. But like it he hasn't was just been shot or, incident, or he was assaulted. Or whatever yeah. that it sounds like he was in, involved in that, uh, from what I gather. So yeah, he was the the shoot. He was the victim of the shooting. Yes. Okay, so that's a line item. I have the power to make problems go away and people disappear and stuff. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, that mm -hmm. was heard. Uh, it, so that's going to oh. be important. That's, so that's what this says. You is missing. Truth Religion said, I heard G was missing. He might be missing on purpose, like in Europe somewhere, kind of like R. Kelly's uh, original victim in that original trial, how she was overseas during the trial. Maybe they, maybe they, maybe they sent him away. Maybe. You, you can't put anything past There's a reason. There's a purpose. Everything. There's a perfect storm for um, confusion to achieve some agenda that's that doesn't involve you know commoners knowing so you know it's elections about to come up and and they and they need to make sure people think all of this is legit so while your eyes on this scandal you know check some of your um your, your local 
state assemblies and congress.gov and c-span and see what they're passing while no one's looking right mm -hmm. that's that part right uh, there you know mm -hmm. they, they, well they i like i like i like what cinda said earlier you know you know where there are one p diddy's there's a hundred of joe foxes out there thousands of joe foxes and aj's out there doing the damn thing doing it in a legit way living mm -hmm. life in a productive manner and you know loving and making people laugh and doing great things yeah, yeah we're, we're doing good things and uh we're sitting in our respective residences and um being conspiracy theorists and said da, 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 ha, ha. They're, they're not <laughs> playing fair they're lying I, I i really i really hope that um the truth comes out and i and i hope it's a lesson to every everyone that <laughs> wants to live recklessly because come on man you know that brother mm -hmm. that, that's some reckless that's a reckless life it, i just i just i had to google what pink cocaine was i didn't even, i didn't even know there was such a thing until pink today cocaine. right it's ecstasy and coke mixed, right? Strawberry flavored. Wait, because yeah. yeah, so it smells. Yeah. Oh, it, so it, you it can flavored. smell strawberries when you get high. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why it's pink, but I heard. Oh, it's mixed with like food coloring, like some type of weird red food coloring. I have no idea why. You know, listen. Have you ever seen it? To... No, I don't ever want to be lawsuit. <laughs> Have yeah, I seen this in the lawsuit? But listen, I just want to say I don't ever want to get too rich or famous or too powerful <laughs> to the point where I'm bored enough to want to go get me cocaine. <laughs> and I'm bored Pink enough. Okay, let me try that. Like, I mean, they put flavors in everything. They put flavors and in, they infuse everything, green tea. Uh peach. right. I'm just saying, like, that's, that's as far as I want to go. I don't really want to get to the point where my life requires pink like i can pick colors of what type of you know <laughs> like that it's just i don't know it's like that you're just too rich when at that point when you get food coloring in your cocaine like how is that even how is that even manufactured is the, is the, is the food coloring like liquid and you gotta dry like how does that even work look this says that uh kk the the chief of staff required all employees from the butler to the chef to the housekeepers to walk around with pouches and fannies filled with cocaine ghb ecstasy marijuana gummies and tucci which is a pink drug that is a combination of ecstasy and cocaine okay you, so we, you're talking you're talking about um freak off party uh hors d'oeuvres and refreshments not just at the party but literally around the house all day long okay so here it is. Is that what it looks like? That's Tucci. Yep, that's Tucci. Oh, man, that look that looked like the beginning of Bad Boys too. When they, had all the, <laughs> when they had all the ecstasy in the drug lab at the bottom of the club. Right. <laughs> that looked like man. That's a damn shame. Yeah. That looked like that looked like crushed up pop rocks. Yeah. <laughs> And Man, you know what? I'm back I, in the day. was the shit Lord. back in the day. Oh, by the way, uh, Joe, my mother told me to tell you hello. <laughs> oh, hey, tell Sister Phyllis I said hello. I will. Yeah. She looked good. Yeah, yeah. that's too shit. Um, wow, that's crazy. Oh, hopefully, hopefully all this stuff is true. Like, it's like somebody, I hope they're not doing too much. It's like, I heard another thing I read, like there's like a sex trafficking thing that yeah. that um that he that did he's involved in. Yeah, yeah. I believe it. Well, he's got underground tunnels in his home. So what you gonna use them for? What he has underground tunnels in the home? Does he know that? I mean Does he I'm, know not, that? I'm not I'm not I'm not trying to defend the brother at all. Like I don't know anything about it, but I don't put past I don't put anything past them people. Like the media, why are these media why are they telling us this? Well, they are they the ones that are telling us, or are the people around him finally telling on him? And see, here's Why? the thing I get concerned with. I no, I saw I, 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 I saw somewhere where described the home that they maybe it was on one of the news reports where they talked about how 
the, the house is so big they needed it was going to take a, at least an oh, hour to, get, to clear the house or whatever and i think that's where they mentioned that so oh, i'm not okay. really i can't really re remember exactly like what source i heard it from but it was from one of like a news source or something so and i was like huh underground tunnels okay but just like epstein, epstein had underground tunnels that led that you know in his house and there was a house in ohio Oh yes, right down the street from me. West Les West Wexler? Les Wexner, the owner and the, the founder of Bed Bath and Beyond, the limited and Victoria's structure. Secrets. So yes. all of that. It's just all so nefarious, honey. It's also crazy. You, you know, the, the these when you get to a certain, you know, you know, proximity to um high society, uh whatever you want to call it, um I think a lot of them are world-class international perversion freaks and they, their lifestyles are made to support their, um, their pro proclivities. Those sexual mm -hmm. proclivities. Mm -hmm. Whatever proclivity you got. I mean, yeah, they had pink <laughs> cocaine up in there. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They, had pink, they had pink crushed up um, drugs in there. Yeah, crushed. I was like, what? But look, AJ, when you mentioned about them clearing the house and having underground uh, underground tunnels, it does not surprise me. Well, for one, when you look at that house, it was like a. It's massive. It's ridiculous. There's no way. Like I always, I would think it would be almost dangerous for law enforcement to go in a place like that because it's unless they literally have the plans in front of them and they know for a fact that those plans are accurate because that place is so massive. Like I'm sure that he has cameras in every room inside and outside that house. So how do you even surprise somebody in a, in a house that big? But the other thing, the one, the place in Miami is right off the water. So they were saying that sometimes boats of, of underage girls would come to that house via the water and i'm sure they say there were buses of girls coming to the house in la so maybe they're entering through the back well they said they're coming in through the back or whatever maybe they're coming in through a tunnel i'm going out well he p, p diddy you need you need to say now look we were shooting a video i mean he need to do something <laughs> he, look, the, movie. we're doing a video and we have i thought i told you that we here. won't stop <laughs> take that, take that, take that. <laughs> That's, it's, it's a, hey, it's I'm going to tell you something. I'm, I'm, I will admit, I'm going to miss the P. Diddy dance. I ain't going to lie. I'm going to miss the dance. I'm going to miss You the can dance. do it. He going to be locked up. He it. won't be doing it. So you can do it. Shoot. Oh, yeah, he will. <laughs> oh, he's going to be doing that. it too. Uh, yeah, he will. He going to be doing it. <laughs> <laughs> he going to like oh, it in there. Lord. He going to have fun in there. What you talking about? <laughs> they gonna make him dance all day. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe they gonna say, "I thought you told me that you won't stop." Hilarious. Right, <laughs> right. I wonder, what, I, I wonder. I would like to know what TD Jakes is doing right now. Is he painting his nails? <laughs> going, ooh Lord, I'm sure glad they ain't talking about me no more. <laughs> you know what's funny? This. This might, no, this might be, know. this might be, all of this is orchestrated by T.D. Jakes. <laughs> Wouldn't that be some all shit? Of it. A.K.A. the power bottom. Oh, man. Y'all better leave the bishop alone, the good bishop. You're going to call me a bishop. power bottom. I'll throw all of you. I, I, I like this, I like this uh, Christmas Eve's uh, speech, Swallow. his sermon. I just want you to tell me, tell you, if you came in here for me to talk about something, you can log off. I was like, TD, you shouldn't use the word log today. That should be oh, oh, my Lord. Oh, my Lord. It's probably, Wrong choice of it, words, TD. Yeah, Wrong T, choice of words. TD Jakes, TD Jakes is, is, is probably saying, thank the Lord. <laughs> yep. He's like, no weapon form against me shall prosper. Hilarious. Oh, I mean, it ain't gonna hurt. It's all so crazy. Hold on. So have y'all seen um hold on, here we here it goes. I love that the, the, every time I see this, it cracks me up. This might just be me. But randomly, every time I walk around the house, 
This is all I say. Have you ever been swallowed? Swallowed. That's Chris oh, Brown. Man. Chris Brown better Chris shut up before he get called in to get subpoenaed. <laughs> <laughs> he didn't know he yeah, was gonna he, be missing in this damn you know, lawsuit. Well, he already had. He already had his his test. <laughs> right. No, he's in the lawsuit. He's in the lawsuit. They've mentioned. Well, they they're hinting that that's he's part of the one of the people that were there or whatever. So. Yeah, it says. Where did I find that? Well, we don't know. He may be his lawyer may have him removed from the case too. Hopefully, I, so. I love Chris it, Brown. I hope that he ain't participated nothing crazy. I know it, it, it's it, it's amazing how it's like get like if guilty by association um, had had a had a name, you know, like had a picture. Like if this was a picture of guilty by association, this this is it. It was like, oh, you were there, right? You, you. Here's a picture of you and him. You, you were involved too, you know. Yeah. yeah, as long as they don't have any damaging information or damaging evidence, you know. Yeah, I think Chris is innocent too. I love Chris Brown and I love his music, and I think that he, you know, I love the fact that he went to, you know, the Afro beat genre because mm. he really had found his niche with that. And uh, and I can see now people are sort of like trying to follow suit, but they he's got so many wonderful hits. Usher can't keep up with that. Mm -mm. Yeah, Usher, Usher, I'm pretty sure he got some stories. Oh, Usher's mentioned in here too. Usher is in here because they say Usher, Usher, um, Usher has is one of the first victims of Diddy's essay, allegedly. That's what I this. Just, I, I, you know what? I just wish, you know, I just wish that we could get to a place where show business is just about talent. You know, right. I would love that. I would love to just get back to it, just being about the great music, great acting, great comedy. You know, great performances. Mm -hmm. I get it. I understand. We all got our, you know, natures. You know, everybody has different sexual procli proclivities, as you said, Joe. But I mean, it's like I don't. I'm just so tired of it. If it being about that, rather mm -hmm. than you know the quality of our of our talent, you know, and uh, you know, I'm, I'm really looking. Uh, whatever whatever the fallout's going to be, and if ever if Babylon does fall down, maybe we can start all over and make it clean. Mm -hmm. Yeah. On one hand, I, I I definitely hope you know the someone spills the beans. Um, yeah, you can't save all of them. I mean, you can't save all of them. It's like if they if they did some debaucherous stuff, then you know they need to be held accountable for it. But oh, I don't absolutely. think it's, I don't think it should be used as a tool to overshadow other people that are are that are going to ultimately get away with it and continue uh, doing you know the you know the same thing. Like, like I, I watched, I watched people were talking about the. The Nickelodeon uh, "Quiet on the Set" that was so disturbing, wasn't it? Or yeah, whatever that I haven't watched those yet, but I just what is that "Quiet on the Set"? Because you mentioned that earlier, I was going to ask you. Yeah, then. "Quiet what on the you... Set" is a I think it's on HBO Max or whatever it is. It's also on Hulu. Maybe. It's also on Hulu. It's very disturbing. It's about... just talking about the exploitation of children from the Nickelodeon era yeah. and how they were. How they were treated, yeah, not, it was awful. I, I I just happened to look up what are people saying about it on YouTube, and a video came up. Goodness, somebody came up. What did you do? Ago. I had Sneezing? something in my mouth. Oh, you uh, did? Yeah, that's what he said. <laughs> <laughs> something in my mouth. I know. But, but, <laughs> how oh my does God. it taste? I'm sorry. Go ahead. But there was a there was a lady on there from a year ago talking about Dan Schneider, Schneider. the Nick the Nickelodeon guy, and the whole video was about feet. Yep, I remember seeing that video, and it's I was like, feet? "Yeah, feet, feet fetish, foot fetish." The kids episodes there was always scenes with feet bare feet put Are feet in mouth real? ketchup 
catch up on feet, hold on to the foot, uh, feet, foot, shoes, feet, you name it. It's one after the another. You string them all together, and it's like, why are we doing with our, this with our feet again? What is it? Okay, you say it's funny. It's fine. It, it was a lot of suggestive things that, that he was having the kids do. Everything was like, everything got, every, kids got squirted in the face looking like cum shots. Like, it was, it's crazy. Like, yeah, watch yeah. It. You need to watch it. You need it to I mean, it's, 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 it's like, it's very suspect. And then what what got me is when is when they had the old it was like an older logo of Nickelodeon and it's on a footprint, so they're putting it in your face. I have a foot fetish. Let's make the the logo the thing that I. And what it what it all boils like down to? They said the same thing that they said the same thing that I was thinking. Like he's you know clearly he suffers from some type of arrested development. You know, he probably didn't get no girls in school. You know what I mean? And he was just that nerdy dude that was in the mama's basement on the computer doing weird stuff, probably looking at porn his whole high school career. Like, you can just see that it was also very sophomoric and very immature type humor. No women on the writing staff, all, you know, 20 something dudes. So that's their humor. Boys you club. know, it, yeah, it reminds, it was, I was gonna say it reminds me of the Balenciaga campaign, like you know, with those ki with the kids, and it was all about um, uh, pedophilia that was all mentioned throughout the the articles and the the news, uh, not newspaper, but like the magazines that were being shown in the midst of the um, the marketing ad. For for Valenciaga, only to find out that this was all because it, it was to attract uh, pedophilia, basically, or people who who have that proclivity. Well, well, and and it's, and it's clear that Nickelodeon, those kids shows, were really not for kids. It was for those people that are attracted to that type of environment. Yeah, that's uh, I, it's, it's 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 shocking and. Diddy was on one episode. Oh wow, are you serious? Yep. There was one episode where Diddy, they walk up to Diddy, hey P. Diddy, or Puff Daddy, or whatever he called him at the time. And so he's like, I can't wake up somebody. I'm trying to wake somebody up and he won't wake up. And so he goes, Well, did you try uh a symbol? And he goes, Yeah. He goes, Did you try sour milk? He says, Yeah. He goes, Okay, here. And he hands him like a toy helicopter. He goes, put that in his pants. Really? They, wow. It's like when they they're putting it in your face, you don't you don't see it, and then Hide when somebody sight. like um, uh, like Corey Feldman <laughs> comes walking up on the video on uh, Barbara Walters and say, "Look, these people have been doing this for <laughs> like they did this and they did," and they're like, "No, you can't say that." What? And Barbara's like, "You're trying to ruin a whole industry." I'm, he was That's like. I said, how, how can you ruin an industry that was ruined and rotten to begin with? This is what they've been right. doing. Right. This is this this is not new. It's like it's shocking, but it's not shocking. Right. And this is what they were doing to the to the girl. I mean, it's all across the board. But just think that what they were doing to the little rascals and, and um, you know, buckwheat and stymie. Get, get, think about that. Mm. You didn't think about that, did you? That's why I tell people, don't be putting your kids in show business until they're 16 or 18. I already posted that the other day. You know, I tell them, listen, do not, because most parents think, oh, no, I'm going to protect my kids. I'm going to be there. Yeah, you say that now. But you listen to the parents on that show and they, you know, they and the ones that do stand up and, and say something, they get they get. Uh, what do you call it? They get. What do you? Uh, they get banished from the set, ostracized. Oh. That's the word I'm. Oh yeah, about. they get isolated from their families. And yeah, they, they they. I mean, it's very they, they're very they're very clever. They're very clever. Mm -hmm. The you, way that oh, they you do can, it. You can put your children in in there. Just send them in there with a whistle. All right, now, <laughs> let, me you, let me show you how how this whistle works. Okay, if anybody mm -hmm. ever does this, blow this whistle. <laughs> if any child, anybody try to take this whistle off, no, 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 you take you blow the. 
So did no, you did, no, did you no, see no. the story about Drake Bell? I saw that, and I and, and for a second there, I thought they was talking about Drake back when he was on Degrassi, and I was like, "Yo, are they Who's talking Drake? about Drake?" Drake. I didn't know. I didn't know about that. I was like, "Oh man, yeah, okay. that story is oh, it's 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 disturbing. It's disturbing." Just think Ooh. about what just think about what they did to the black kids on that set. Wait, who is Drake Bell, and what set? Quite on, on the set. On Nickelodeon, oh, I was one of those saying, shows. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, yeah you gotta a, watch it. Those shows. And well, the black kid got. I t well, the, the, watch it. I don't want to tell, give it away, but the black. Why not? Kid, hey, I'll, I'll go. I'll go ahead and check it out. But this, this isn't the story that we want to see the sequel to. I'm just like, what happened? <laughs> well, no, they, they, they dress one kid up as like, um, a fetus. I know you lying. And they made him wear this like skin tone, skin tight thing. And then they also dress another kid up in another skin tight, like quote unquote superhero suit. But they had, he was like Mr. I forgot the name they called him, but it was like Mr. Nose or the nose guy or something. But he so they they put it, they added a big nose on the on the, on the, on his nose, and then mm -hmm. on his shoulders they had sewn like like two noses, but they look like penises. And so every time he sneezes, snot will come out and it'll hit somebody in the face. It's just, I mean, I'm telling you, it's the, so these hard. Are, wow. the, they're, they're freaks, they're perverts, they're debaucherous demons that are among us. And we love it. And we, we set our children down in front of it. And they, well, they love it. They sing the songs. What about Lil JJ? Wasn't he wasn't his show on Nickelodeon? What was that called? The um Lil JJ the comedian? Yes. I never saw it. I, I do know that he did some TV on one of those uh he, networks, he was but on, I never knew. He was on some show called something the something Jordan. But anyway, I saw where he people asked him, Well, why did your why did your show end? And his his uh answer was because I didn't want to give up. Makes sense to me. Makes sense to me too. Oh, yeah. you're trying to be a star? Well, you need to do these things. He's like, oh no, no, pops, like pops ain't gonna go for that. I ain't gonna go for that. Yeah, yeah. No. I'm like, I, I don't need that. See, people like him. Hopefully, he'll spill the beans like that and say, oh, that's that's why. That's um, why. And let me answer this question. Um, the T Lounge, you asked why was uh the Clark sisters, why were they mentioned? The only thing I saw about the Clark sisters being mentioned was that little Rod um either once worked for them or with them. Uh, he's either produced music with them in the past. Um, but that was all that I knew. Yeah, the plaintiff, though he's just part of his resume. Yeah. The yeah. Clark, the Clark sisters were. Mentioned in the the the, the, the Diddy lawsuit. lawsuit, yeah. Because they were. What is he being alleged to doing? Like, what are the charges? The oh. charges are sexual. Oh, well, with him, with Lil Rod in particular, it sounds like being drugged, being harassed, intimidated, um, forced to right. lie to the uh, authorities. Um, he was sexually assaulted and uh, multiple times. Um, so he says by Cuba Gooding Jr by diddy by sex workers you know so yeah so this is gonna sound bad no say it we're just educating everybody so 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 basically <laughs> this I, I i always say this it's a different set of rules when you're black it's a different set rule? of rules why the, the, rule, the, the rules are you're not white, therefore you <laughs> cannot do anything that we do. No shit. And, okay, and get ahead. away with it. You don't. You you. This rules are for you, not for us. Mm -hmm, okay, mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. you you do all this documentary, quiet on the set. Okay, do shit to black people. Point out what they're we're doing it, but point out their fault 
get get the 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 media train going and the lawsuits going so they won't watch our debauchery because we want to get away with it can i so, so point the finger at them and 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 we'll move off you know we'll throw you a couple dan schneider what do they call it? a white sacrifice go ahead. you have him and then we're gonna round up the rest of you and uh say yep we got all of them and then they go off into the sunset and then when the coast is clear when the heat dies down there's a whole nother crop of uh kid stars waiting to be diddled but, but here's the thing joe so mm -hmm. i i hear what you're saying do i mm -hmm. think that white folks do this shit all the time and we don't even hear about it but we know it's happening yeah but here's the thing i'm i'm never going to excuse a black person from doing such disgusting, egregious acts towards other, other black people, because all the white folks are doing it and getting away with it. That's why. Because that's the why truth I, is, those types yeah. of crimes happen with folks in proximity of themselves. Black folks tend to uh, uh, look. White folks tend to commit more crimes against white folks than they do anybody else because. It's within their proximity. Same with black folks. So when I hear people say, oh, this black on black crime, well, that's just how it works in every community. But at the end of the day, I don't care more about what white folks are doing when my if my own black folks, because I'll be honest, when I've been mistreated for the I'm not saying every time I've been mistreated, but in if if I were to pick out some of the things I've heard these people say about Diddy and the things that have come closest to that that I have personally experienced, I didn't experience it from the white folks. It was with black folks. And I would want that nigga in jail just like I want them white folks in jail. That's, That's true. Opinion. That's true. But un unfortunately, we're, we're not in charge of the, we don't have a major influence on the court systems and stuff. We we don't police our <laughs> own. We sub submit to their uh, uh, rules, laws, regulations, and, and, and their system governs okay. us so my point is you need to treat your own like you're treating us i agree don't, don't let them don't let us take the brunt don't take you know we take the hip we I black people are taking the the brunt of the punishment and you make it look like you're policing your own by throwing a, a two or three uh uh white folks that are indulging in these practices and behaviors and say it's not about race i always pull the race card and i'm saying it's foul you can't to begin ignore with. it you can't yeah. ignore the race i agree with yeah. you you can't ignore it because so, we're treated so I, very differently in the yeah. in the justice system there's no justice and not, only, and not only that this is this is big business this isn't about this isn't about crime this is about making making money and transferring the wealth of one person to many others or maybe just another person it costs money to go to court costs money for lawyers and they all know each other the vultures the sharks the predators the jackals and if you indulge in some of those behaviors that those people you think you're like them because you're in proximity to them you're not them you i agree I, I agree yes. diddy's biggest mistake was thinking that he was no longer black just because he had money because they will tear him down just faster much faster than they will any of their white counterparts no doubt about it but i'm gonna tell you right now i don't give a damn what it takes for white folks to handle a predator if if because they are throwing us a bone or if they are um going to uh make it look like they're they're doing something on our behalf so be i don't give a damn how they make it look like as long as the predator is handled that's all i care about and if the predator looks like me and you so be it because he's a motherfucking predator <laughs> man i don't know what they did uh, uh diddy should have been on uh, dateline what's his name chris chris man <laughs> Chris Matthews, what is that that dude to, to catch a predator? They could have. Yes. <laughs> they <could've been> <laughs> I so I'd like to add to that. I don't think that it was about him thinking that he wasn't black. I think that he thought. I think that he's been getting away with things for so long because he was under their protection, and I think that he felt exempt and he felt a, a false sense of privilege and yep. a false sense of safety 
in yep. order to do all these things. And I think that he knows where a lot of their bodies are buried. That's why his every single house was uh, so you know uh, he videoed and there's cameras mm -hmm. everywhere. And and I think he's got a lot of big names on video and on tape. Mm -hmm. So and I think it's going to be the same thing as Epstein. I don't think they're going to. Um, I think he'll he'll be the fall guy, but I don't think they're going to release a whole lot of information, information. that because Probably. I think it feels like they it feels like he knew they were coming, so that's why he fled he fled and he got out of the way so they can take all of the evidence to cover their asses. Perhaps. It wasn't so, it yeah. wasn't so yeah. much about, oh, let us incriminate this guy. I think that they all are in bed together, like literally and business wise. And so I think that th it was more about that than anything else. And I think that he, all these years, he knew he's he's he knew exactly who he was working for and who had their hand and who's in his pocket and and how he you know he like you say he had law enforcement in his on his payroll and the whole thing so he was like yeah I can do whatever I want and I can unalive anybody I want if you piss me off because I have these guys protecting me mm -hmm. yeah and like I said before he he probably offended someone that right that yeah. can can do something about it. It's like there's always it's the world that we live in where a black man no matter who you are, no it doesn't matter your character or whatever. It doesn't it it does not matter when you have uh, a certain uh, position of power or influence even if it's just a little small portion. Mm -hmm. Don't get don't man don't get too big big for your britches now. Don't don't uh don't go getting uppity. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't get on. Don't get on uppity. Now that ain't for you to say. You just sit there and do your drugs and dance and mistreat your own people and traffic them people and stuff like that. Yeah, but you don't. You don't do this to us, or don't bite the hand and feed you or something like that. Right. Now, there's always somebody there to check check you doing that, and I I think there's a little bit of that. Just, I just, just have painful. a bone. I just want to say this about Judge Mathis too, who posted about oh it was a little too it was excessive force. Did you see that? No. no. He's, when he said it was excessive force for them to, they, they didn't do this to uh, Jeffrey Epstein's house. First of all, I don't care. And That's I said, what I'm saying. And I said, I said, listen, and I had to say something. I said, do you think that it was excessive force when he broke Kim Porter's nose? Do you think it was excessive force when him and uh, Aaron Hall took turns raping that 17 year old girl? Do you think that's excessive force? Or when he orchestrated Tupac's murder and that's documented? And, and possibly was, big, yeah. And, and possibly so, bigger too. Because I would, I would consider murder excessive force. What do you think, judge? <laughs> Miss me with this BS. I was like, dude, don't even, don't even try this whole thing about I, it. If, just because he's black, they did something different. No, he's a horrible human being. He is. Period. He is. That's, that's the... But... No, Joe. I, I, don't, no I, don't, I don't. I don't necessarily agree with how he said. It, if that's what what he said, how how he said that, it was it isn't a point. little. Don't compare. Don't. I, right. I don't need. I don't. I don't need that. I don't need that comparison. Right. I, I like, I just compared, Joe. You huh? kind of did. You kind of just compared it. No, 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 no. He's not. No, no. I'm, talk, I'm talking about a specific. I'm across the board when I when I say look. There's different sets of rules, yeah. When it comes to black people, and what across the board. So, so that's that's my point. For Judge Mathis yeah. being a judge to say that, and it's like, black. bro, you already know how this works. You already know yes. that we always get the short end of this justice stick, if you will. We all yeah. so it's always going to be a double standard. So for so for us to try to behave the way everybody else behaves, and they get away with it, doesn't mean that you're going to. And doesn't mean that it's and none of it is right. So whoever right. behaves like that needs to be held accountable across the board. Yes. 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 Even yeah, our I, own I just, people, if that's who it, if that's what we're doing, mm -hmm. guess what we're not gonna tolerate? We're not gonna tolerate that. Yeah, Thank I you. I just I just don't like okay, if if he getting hit with this, you know, um with this stick of this size, I need you to hit him over there with that same size stick. That's all I'm saying. That's all I'm yeah, saying. they're not. They're never going to do that. 
but we should mm-hmm. always we should already understand that no matter what what industry we decide to get into mm-hmm. and the way that he's disrespecting like like and and the thing that you're doing this to your own culture and your own people please but that 17 year old girl that i forementioned mm-hmm. she was not she was not uh black she's Hispanic. Well, was she, was she, she considered was white girl. she was considered white yeah. How white? How white um, is she considered? What's her I name? Because she's a video vixen. Um, no, no, she was a seventeen-year-old girl in high school. Oh, I wanna, that's I want to say her name was like Liza something. Because at first oh, she was a Jane Doe, and then she finally disclosed her name, and her name is like Liza something. Oh, I thought you were talking about. Okay, so what about the girl? Oh, you know what? Okay, so the girl that Aaron Hall has the baby by, who was the video vixen. Oh no, I'm not talking about her. Okay, what what is her name? I can't think of it. I mean, that's you know, that's you know, in my personal opinion, I I think things like that are are, are weighed by people who can. you know, execute judgment and punishment. It's weighed. It's it's weighed in the balance. Who who did he violate? A Spanish chick that passes for white. Gloria Velez. That's who. That was who it was. <laughs> but if it's like what? Oh, she got blonde hair, blue eyes. Oh no, we we need we have a different we have a different punishment package for you, Negro. Let's work. Let's let's let's. <laughs> coordinate a raid in three on three coasts <laughs> <laughs> no we're gonna hit all your houses because simultaneously you know don't, uh, you know there, there's a dossier you know when you're that big that you know there, there's a file they, they didn't open the file on you they did they did the same thing to michael jackson with the exception of <laughs> that was a, a witch hunt in my opinion yeah. mine but too it, Oh, I sure. so here's, here's, this, this is what I want to say before I go because I've got to. Yeah, we're. Oh, goodness, we've been out here for um, a while. So I feel like Michael was aware of all that goes on. And oh, I feel yeah. like that's, and I feel like that was his way of protecting the kids, you know, save the world. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. Make it a better place. And he was doing all these kid foundations, all the kids fundraise. Like he really had this uh, mission to protect the children. And I think Mm -hmm. that it worked against their agenda, pissed them Mm -hmm. off, and Mm -hmm. flipped it and called him a pedophile. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's it's the the power to power to change the truth. um, Right. It's that's and, that's and, yeah. But, but my yeah. whole thing is if, if they if they gonna if they put you under surveillance for ten years and found nothing, chances are it's a witch yeah. hunt. The 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 man the man of, offended the the establishment that you could say made him famous. Um, and he went against. He went. Sony. He went. He went against the the, the system. Like, how yeah. dare you buy uh, Little Richard's masters and give them to him? And mm-hmm. right, and give him and right, and, re, and give how, him what how, he's how owed. How dare, how dare you, you buy, buy the Beatles, the Beatles masters? Catalog? Yeah. How dare? How dare you buy covert- the Beatles and not let them buy it? <laughs> you yeah. can't own us. We own you. Yeah, you don't right. own us. We own you. That that's mm-hmm. not how this works. How how dare you buy half the Sony catalog? Oh, hey, hey Mike! <laughs> just Damn. we just weave the web of black ownership. It took them years to. Un- they're still unraveling that. By the way, that's Mike dancing behind us as we speak. By the way, you just can't really tell because we're. Up oh, I, I, I saw it. That was a, the "What's Up with You" <laughs> video. It looked like. Yeah. What's up? What's up? Oh, and by the way, somebody was trying to clown that song, that video, and I was like, I don't even know. I, I, here, here's here's my truth. I loved that song, and by the and and in addition to, I was one of the first pe- people to hear that song because Eddie Murphy invited me and a 
group of comedians to come up to listen to it when it was just a demo. He was wow. so proud. He's like, I got Michael Jackson to sing on a song with, on the same album with me. And so we was like, that's, we was like smoking weed. Oh, man. <laughs> that's dope. Oh, yeah. That, we was all bobbing our heads. What's up? What's up? I, <laughs> hope, <laughs> I hope cats like that, like, you know, people that were like the rock stars uh, back in the day, I, I hope they have, you know, they're journaling and writing their memoirs from when they go. They just spill the beans. This is what they've been doing the whole time. <laughs> right. This, this is all I'll though. Name, <laughs> name names. Right. You know, may, maybe they can, you know, make some, you know, the, make some emerald tablets Catherine or Hepburn, something like that. That's what Catherine Hepburn did. She didn't release her book until she, she said, "This you can't publish this until I go. Yeah, wow. I, a lot of people it some, some bean spillers they'll take it to the yeah. grave but they left a book behind uh, yes but now now you can just make a video and just put it on tiktok doing it 50 parts and you really get some attention but anyway that's something else well joe it was a pleasure meeting you can i get you to uh commit in this moment to come back to my show oh yes most definitely I, okay. I will come back if, if I can come back. Now, do you normally do it on Wednesdays? I do it whenever. You do it whenever. Well, you have I my try, information. I like for my interviews to be Wednesdays, but it doesn't have to be. It doesn't have to okay. Be. Well, you that that handle right there, uh, you can always uh, reach out and say, hey, like that's what AJ did. Hey, we're still live. I got excited. I was doing this. I was like, let me, let me get... We get done. Yay. You know? Well, good. So, yeah. I'm glad that you're always there. Coming up. It was a, such, such a nice surprise to see you. It yeah, was. likewise. Thank, <laughs> thanks for telling me about it. So, now, are you. All right, now, we got to get like, together. Me up with, uh, oh, yeah, definitely. But tag me or, or send me a message where I can re watch the rest of what I missed. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> sure will. Will do. Ladies, it's been an honor. Thank you so much. I'm going to get back and pack and, and get on to my flight. To Toledo. Yes. To Toledo. No. Yeah. No Safe travels, Joe. Safe travels. Thank you so much. <laughs> Safe travels to you and blessings to you and your families. Thank you. Later. Thank you. Bye, Joe. Well, thank you again, AJ. Tell the people how they can get in touch with you and what you got coming up next. Honey, I'm going to be in Spain next month, making people laugh at, on the high seas. And um, I've got I've got some really exciting, cool things jumping off. Um, nothing to really talk about just yet, but okay. it's all in the works. And um, you can hit me up on Instagram. I'm stand up girl. And, you know, you can find me on Facebook. That's all I do. Just like Cinda, honey. I just be on social media talking trash. <laughs> And in my opinion, that nobody asked for, huh? And the stand-up girl, you guys spelled with girl is spelled with a U, so stand-up yes. girl, one word. And I might change that too, but right now it's stand-up girl. I like it. I don't know why. Girl. I like to change my handle every now and then. Do you don't do that? You confuse I us. Know. I know. I know. I know. I don't know why. I want, <laughs> but well, I'm thinking about just putting my actual name, so okay. you know, so it'll be a little bit more. We'll see. I haven't decided yet. Right now, it's Stand Up Girl. Okay. All right. Well, look, I'm going to put you in the back, but I don't want you to go yet because there's something I want to ask you real quick before we before we hang up, hang up. Okay. 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 All right. So to everybody, give, give uh, AJ some love in the chat. Send her some kissy faces, okay? Some kissy lips in the chat from the, uh, everybody here. Thank you so much, AJ. I enjoyed Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Always. Thank you. Absolutely. Yes. All right. I'm going to put you in the back. Hold on for me one second. Okay. All right, everybody. So thank you guys for joining me tonight. If you have some show ideas, uh, you can hit me up via email or uh, via IG. And here's that information right here.
Yes, they're sending you all kinds of kisses in the chat there, AJ. So thank you to everybody who came in and hung out with us. Thank you to my moderators. Thank you to everyone who super chat, a cash app, the guests. And I will be sure to split that, cat, that super chat up, T-Rain, and make sure that my guests get it. Um, to everybody, I just want to thank you guys for being here. And next week, Next Wednesday, I have another special guest coming, okay? Again, he is a returning guest. Uh, Alvin Chia of Take Six will be here next Wednesday night. And um, then got some other stuff coming up soon too. But with that said, I want to thank everybody for being here, for supporting uh, any content creators that dropped down. If I didn't get to acknowledge you, know that you are appreciated for coming. And um, I hope everybody has a great night. See you guys later. And... Smooches. <laughs>